Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome also from my side, exactly, I'm Marco Buoni, Real Alternatives Ambassador and uh, Area President, the European Association of uh, RAC uh, Refrigeration Service Technicians. Today, we'd like to give you just a, a very brief uh, uh, note of what is Real Alternatives. And uh, you will see in the next hour a lot of uh, uh, details about real alternatives and also uh, short training from the from our uh, ex from extracted from the training course. Real alternatives is a blended learning, which means you can learn uh, about low GPT refrigerant alternative refrigerants online or in classroom. And the refrigerants are the flammables, HFC, uh, HFOs. Uh, HFC blends, uh, hydrocarbons, CO2, ammonia, low GRP refrigerants. Uh, we have nine modules uh, with different uh, learning uh, materials, in particular about safety. We have free learning material available for download. We have multilingual. Today is an example. We have translation in several languages to reach uh, the, um, uh, our technicians across many countries. And we have uh, exactly 600 registrations uh, also for this reason. And we have 20 countries uh, joining Real Alternatives in this project. Um, we have been uh, from the beginning funded by European uh, Union uh, and supported by European Commission and UNEP and presented in several uh, events, different events. Uh, in light of the gas regulation review, it's very important to have uh, uh, training material, uh, not just uh, learning, but also, as I said, uh, practical. For example, we have uh, uh, licensed training providers in each country where you can do best practices in full equipped laboratories. You will see many pictures, for example, from uh, Spain, from uh, Armenia, from Romania, from Czech Republic, to, from uh, Slovakia, uh, and also from uh, uh, Poznan in Poland about uh, training. Uh, and also we do theory in classroom or remote now that uh, we are uh, all remote. And also we do certification, which is very important. On top of FGAS regulation or of, on top of your national regulation to have a certification about about alternative refrigerants. And we hope that this will be implemented in the revision of gas regulation. This is a very important topic uh, for the next revision. We are moving to alternative refrigerant, low GP refrigerant. And so we also need to move to skill up our technician that are going to use this new refrigerant that need uh, special skills about flammability, toxicity, and high pressures. And we already certified more than 2,000 technicians. Our sector is dynamic. Our sector is uh, very, very uh, enthusiastic. Our three teachers are very enthusiastic and um, it's very it's changing quite quickly, our sector. So we need as well to change quick. And uh, our sector, most of all, is essential. We saw it in the last two years. Two points about our agenda. In the first hour, we will have uh, uh, introductions about what we do in real alternatives, the importance of training and certification by Didier Coulomb, greetings by our stakeholders, our training centers. An example of uh, um, one of the trainees that did in Prozon uh, our training, uh, evolution from uh, real alternatives, the, what was the path uh, of a learning experience as well from Miriam Woodway about, uh, uh, he was going to show you how to uh, assess our uh, assess uh, uh, to enter our training uh, courses, and then the short training by Marino Bassi of Centro Studigerio and by Kivanch of Sociad, and then a wrap up at the end. Now I don't want to take more time. Uh, I would like to give the floor to the director of IAR, Didier Coulomb. Thank you, Didier, for being with us today. Um, you can unmute yourself and uh, we can uh, have your uh, speech about the importance of training and certification. Please uh, unmute, you're still in mute. Thank you, Didier. Nice to see you virtually here today. Thank you, Marco. So good morning, everyone, or perhaps good evening for certain people, but generally good morning. Uh, I would like to uh, present you the importance of training and certification. Next. Well, first, with a short introduction about the International Institute of Refrigeration, our actions regarding training and certification, but uh, insisting on two aspects. First, the increasing importance of refrigeration, and secondly, the need for qualified technician. And of course, as a conclusion, 
the need of training and certification, and the need of this webinar. Next. The IIR, uh, International Institute of Federation, was founded in 1908. Uh, it is an independent intergovernmental science and technology based organization, and its mission is to disseminate worldwide knowledge on all revolution technologies and users with the goal of a refrigeration for sustainable development. Next. Well, key domains of activities include food quality and safety from farm to consumer, comfort in homes and commercial buildings, healthcare products and services, low temperature and liquefied gas technologies, energy efficiency, and the safe use of non-ozone depleting and low global warming refrigerants. Since the beginning, just of course, before we had this World Activity for Life initiative. And all our activities are linked with the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. We have an interregional network with 59 member countries, or almost uh, 1,000 corporate and private members, and more than 300 experts with uh, coordination and actions with all the various organizations. You have some examples um, just at the, the, the bottom of, of this that slide. What do we do? We have uh, our goal, of course, is to have an, an efficient and virtual network adapted to your needs. We have a free database with uh, almost um, 110,000 uh, affirmances. We have the International Journal of Refrigeration, which is the uh, peer-reviewed journal, as, which is a reference in that field. We publish gu guides, courses, informatory notes for decision makers. We have professional directories. We have a newsletter, organized conferences all over the world. We have working groups, research and development projects. And, uh, and you, if you can see in our web, on our website, all our activities, you will see that refrigerants are clearly one of the most important subjects of our conferences, of our guides, of our informatory notes. Next. First, the increasing importance of refrigeration. Of course, refrigeration is necessary as the cold chain for food. Refrigeration capacities, for instance, can be 10 times lower in developing countries than in developed ones and the population is growing. So it is a problem of food security, it's a problem of health. And regarding health, it is not only the problem for food, but also health products and services such as vaccines and you know all the problems we, we had as logistic problems regarding vaccines for the, for the COVID. One or in two medicines on the market is now heat sensitive. So you need uh, the, refrigerator, the cold chain for food and health products. As air conditioning global energy needs for space cooling are set to triple by 2050, especially in developing countries, but also in countries where it is less developed, for instance, in uh, uh, Central or North Europe, it will become a necessity all over the world, of course, also for vehicle air conditioning and so on. New technologies need constant temperatures and thus you need refrigeration. Information technologies, databases, uh, data centers, biotechnologies, simply technologies, for instance. Heat pumps have a unique role in the energy system of the future. We see already that in Europe, in Eastern Asia, in North America. Gas liquefaction, I mentioned hydrogen and CO2 uh, in the slide, but of course, you now also are certainly aware of the role of liquefied natural gas uh, regarding the, the current events uh, in Europe. And cryogenics in hospitals, for instance, you need refrigeration for all our, these activities which are absolutely necessary. And thus, we need more people in the industry and in maintenance services. Next. We, in addition, need qu more qualified technicians. The refrigeration accounts for 7.8% of global greenhouse gas emissions. It is not negligible. Most of, most of that, 63% is due to the production of electrical energy and refrigeration accounts for 20% of the global energy consumption. And these figures are increasing. We thus need better energy efficiency and more complex systems that save energy and use renewables. Of course, it is not directly linked, but it is clearly indirectly linked with the message I would like to now uh, give you regarding refrigerants. Because of course we need uh, in implementing this system, the refrigeration system, we need to take into account the, the issue of energy consumption. 
of this, uh, these global greenhouse gas emissions due to the fusion sector is due to fluorocarbons, CFCs, at CFCs, at CFCs. We need to use a lower global warming potential refrigerants and where possible, very low GLP refrigerants, including natural refrigerants because of the key amendment. Of course, for certain countries, you have more time to do it, to phase down at CFCs and to phase out at CFCs, but you all need to be prepared for the uh, very near future. Low global warming potential refrigerants are either flammable, mildly flammable, toxic, or high pressure, and cannot be installed and used similarly to the previous uh, energy equip uh, refrigerant equipment. And thus, we need more qualified people. And certification of technicians is even mandatory, such in the EU with the FCAS regulation. Next. So as a conclusion, training and certification are required. Relatives for Life is a project funded by the European Commission, and the IR was a member of the consortium, as we are in other projects with the European Commission, but also with the United Nations agencies and programs. So because of the internet problem in the internet, course materials have been developed. They have been already translated in various natural languages, Croatian, Czech, Dutch, English, Finnish, French, German, Italian, Polish, Portuguese, Romanian, Russian, Slovenian, Spanish, Turkish, Estonian, Greek, and 20 national associations can now implement them according to their national context. And I hope that we have next time uh, more uh, no languages, more national associations involved. Thank you. Thank you, Didier. This was very good introduction for the Real Alternatives project. I ask everyone to uh, put the questions in the question box, uh, please. And now I pass the word to the first round of stakeholders, uh, training centers, that will give us a good example of what we do. Blanca, I ask you to share your screen, please. Blanca Gomez from Cinei, Spain. We can see you very well. Maybe we can hear you as well. So I will uh, ask everyone to put questions in the question box, so even for Didier. If there is question, please, uh, we will ask uh, later to Didier. We will have uh, some question and answer section at the the end of his stakeholders and experience delivering training across Europe section. In Spain, you have to know, I, I don't see it full screen yet, Blanca, if you can put it full screen, please. And if you can try to speak as well, Blanca, just to try to check that you, you are. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we can see you. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, I think I have <clears throat> now some problem to put a full screen. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Okay, but we can see your screen. I think uh, nobody is going to be mad about you if you keep it like that anyway. We, we can read it anyway, uh, Blank. Uh, you can just okay. uh, change slide uh, on your left. Uh, I don't think everybody... Oh, yes, this is perfect now, Blank. Uh, <laughs> magic. <you. laughs> Only one thing I want to say to about you, you. Spain is a success story. We had in Spain the uh, real alternatives uh, project and schemes mandatory for uh, the country. So it is uh, available for the mandatory certification that the technician need to have to work on alternative refrigerants. So thank you, Blanca, for being on the forward for Europe. We hope to have similar schemes available in the rest of Europe. Thank you, Blanca, your turn. Okay, thank you. Thank you to all and thank you for inviting me to participate in this very interesting uh, um, conference. Uh, I will talk a little bit about our, um, our sector in Spain. Spain, as you can see in the map, is a big country in Europe uh, with uh, almost uh, more than 500,000 uh, inhabitants and uh, 127 uh, uh, certified professionals and 20,000 uh, uh, companies working in the refrigeration area, which is, uh, this is an estimation. Our confederation uh, started, was founded uh, almost 50 years ago, 1973. We have 16 associations. We are a contractors companies, installation companies. And most of them, most of our members are companies working 
in the HVAC refrigerational area. So we concentrate our activity in refrigeration air conditioning uh, mostly. When the European regulation uh, in 2014, the FCAS regulation was approved, we realized very quick that 15 years uh, could seem a very long term to adapt, but it wasn't uh, because uh, a new area was starting and we needed uh, a certified good professionals, very good qualified for the new area of new gases with new um, systems. Uh, and we had to start uh, thinking of uh, training. That's why we took contact with the Real Alternatives platform. Uh, Realize was a very good uh, training uh, material in, and we inform our government, our uh, ministry, environment ministry about this platform, because they were working on the transposition of the European regulation to our legal uh, uh, map. So what they did was to translate with us the full platform. And in 2017, when the FGAS regulation, the Spanish FGAS regulation was implemented, they regulated something very important, which was an extra six hours training in alternative refrigerants, obligatory, mandatory for all professionals. And uh, uh, they had a period of four years until February 2, uh, 2021 to adapt, to make this uh, um, mandatory training. And they validated the real alternative certification as valid to prove this training. Of course, the platform, the real alternative uh, content was much more wide than just six hours but they um, did it and was very important to make it valid to prove this mandatory training. In 2018, uh, we became national lead of real alternatives uh, in Spain. And up to date, we have five homologated training centers. Uh, we have almost 1,000 certified individuals and over 2,000 users in the platform. Uh, what are our uh, aim in the new in the near future? Now, 2021 is past has passed, so most professionals are already certified. But uh, for us, it's very important uh, to have really good uh, trained uh, professionals uh, for new gases which are entering the market every day. So we'd like to homologate new uh, training centers to promote practical training, which is very important, and to spread uh, uh, trained professionals. Because most professionals, uh, our uh, feeling is that they think they don't need that. They think they know all, and uh, this is not uh, real. It's always good to have more training because new gases are flammable, and uh, the new, they need new safety uh, characteristics and they, knew they need to know more about them. So new good practices are very important uh, for them. So these are some photographs of uh, our training program in some training centers. Yes, an example. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Blanca, it was very nice. Uh, you have a lot of training uh, providers in Spain. Graziella, are you ready? Yes, I uh, will share the screen. Please share your screen. Graziella from Romania. Graziella took part to the consortium in the beginning as stakeholders. And Graziella does a lot of training in Romania, right? Graziella, please. Yes. We can see your screen. You can put in full mode. You yes. can start your presentation. First of all, thank you for the opportunity to say some words about uh, our work uh, and uh, the contribution in the project. Uh, and I want uh, to thanks uh, to the organizer and the leader uh, 
the Institute from UK. And uh, to say some words about our efforts, uh, the efforts of Romanian General Association of Refrigeration Activity in, and uh, some uh, results and contribution for this uh, refrigeration uh, air conditioning work in the field of natural refrigerant and environmental protection. Uh, here uh, you can see um, some examples of our uh, um, association activity, uh, how we organize national uh, training certification and many others in uh, 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 Romanian national uh, uh, regions. Uh, um, and uh, also uh, you can see here uh, other examples uh, from uh, um, uh, our activity and uh, from uh, Bucharest, Mishwara, Baku, Cluj, Craiova, important uh, uh, cities in our country. Uh, and uh, um, as you know, uh, Romanian General Association of Refrigeration is a professional uh, non-governmental deploying its activity in the field of refrigeration and air conditioning. Uh, and also you can see here images uh, about uh, how we organize training uh, certification and uh, uh, also uh, how we deliver uh, uh, training. Uh, and uh, how, um, in this field of uh, uh, EU regulation uh, 517 uh, 2014, FGAS regulation, and uh, its relevant subsidiaries in this uh, pandemic time. Also, you can see uh, our how we uh, offer the certificates uh, and uh, um, how we cooperate with uh, uh, other entities, uh, national level, uh, with a patronage for uh, refrigeration and uh, air conditioning, uh, uh, the private sector in our country, close cooperation with ministries, the Minister of uh, Environment, Economy, uh, LIPOR, and uh, uh, also uh, um, other entities like uh, standardization and uh, not in the last part, uh, and I will show you some examples of academic activity and uh, universities. Um, about this uh, academic uh, activity, you can see here uh, um, some examples of uh, our work in uh, the last uh, uh, two, three years pandemic time. In fact, uh, so uh, we attended a lot of uh, conferences and congresses, and we uh, we uh, uh, um, sent and present a lot of articles about natural refrigerants. For example, Gustav Lorenzen conference with natural uh, fluids in Japan. Also, a lot of uh, articles about eco efficientization, uh, renewable energy, uh, geothermal. Uh, and retrofit and uh, uh, heat pumps uh, and uh, uh, other comparative refrigeration. Uh, so uh, you can see also here uh, some examples of how we uh, disseminate uh, the results of uh, this project in the only one uh, uh, journal we have uh, in our country, Frigo Clima Journal. And uh, some examples of books we create uh, about uh, renewable energy and natural refrigerant, like uh, this uh, PhD master thesis, uh, and uh, this was uh, finished uh, in 2021. Um, also, you can see here examples from uh, the project, uh, how we organize uh, 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 training, how we delivered, train the trainers uh, event, um, theoretical and practical training. You have uh, also uh, examples um, from this pandemic time because we have a lot of information about our activity. It was a huge effort for our association and our technicians and our trainers. And you have here uh, examples of theoretical training uh, this was online uh, because the pandemic and also uh, practical training uh, and you can see here uh, um, how we solve in person this time uh, face to face. Um, also, uh, you can see here examples of practical training and theoretical training with CO2 
uh, and uh, uh, our trainers here uh, very well uh, 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 prepared and uh, high uh, level uh, education uh, and how we offer the certificates uh, and uh, um, our uh, uh, setups and equipments. Uh, also, you can see here, uh, as you see, uh, because uh, this was a small problem in the project, uh, we we tried to to build setups with our uh, possibilities with, from association and equipments and uh, for CO2 and flammable. And uh, you can see here the activity between 2020 and 2021. Uh, again, uh, uh, you can see here the last uh, image uh, with uh, our activity in this pandemic time, 2022, because uh, uh, this didn't uh, stop in our country. And uh, unfortunately, it was more uh, uh, theoretical uh, training uh, because uh, uh, it was uh, difficult uh, uh, to... to uh, um, teach them face-to-face uh, -face and, and it was not allowed, in fact, uh, and we respected uh, the legislation in our country. And you see our last uh, courses in 2022 with uh, uh, certificates and technicians uh, uh, who, who finished uh, this uh, winter. Uh, in conclusion, uh, in this uh, Real Alternatives for Life uh, project, we certified uh, with our uh, 112 uh, uh, technicians for flammable and 76 for CO2, and we planned uh, more than 90 uh, in already in uh, the most important uh, uh, cities we have in our country, uh, Craiova, Sibiu, București, Bacău, Cluj, Timișoara. Also, uh, we organize meetings with companies because uh, we have to convince them uh, uh, about the, and, and to explain uh, the strategy of uh, natural refrigerants. And I'm talking about ammonia, CO2, hydrocarbon, uh, uh, water and uh, uh, air, the big five. Uh, also, we made advertise and uh, you can see in, uh, our uh, uh, site, uh, our journal, uh, in newsletters, uh, banners, and conferences with natural uh, refrigerants, we organize, and you have uh, uh, here our country with uh, eight thank you, Gazelle. national uh, region. I want to thank you very much, and uh, uh, again, congratulations to the organizer for this important... Thank uh, you. We are at 283 participants now at the moment. I think Liana is back. Let's try again from Armenia. Uh, thank you, Gazelle. Please stay with us. Okay, uh, stay safe and peace to everybody. <laughs> peace to everyone. Yes, Liana, we can see you very well from your mobile. Try to speak, please. Uh, yes, hello. I would yes. like to greet everybody. And uh, good, good. And now I will try to share my presentation. Thank you, Liana. Nice to have you with us from Armenia. I saw your training centers uh, many times, and it's wonderful. So it uh, would be uh, lovely to see the training you did there. Is a UNIDO equipped training center, if not mistaken, right, Liana? Yes, you are correct. It's problems with projecting my presentation on the screen. Is it possible if I ask Sylvia to do so? I can do it from my side. Um, but, uh, yes, the training center was established under the uh, project implemented jointly with UNIDO and the government of the Russian Federation. And its inauguration took place in 2018 uh, at the Interstate Ecological Council of the CIS countries. On the picture, you can see the Minister of Environment uh, of Armenia, the Environment of the of Belarus, and also the Deputy Minister of Environment of the Russian Federation also attended the event. And the coverage of the event was quite significant, both in uh, various Armenian media and so in Russian media as well. Can you see the third light? Yes. I move it. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, here on the picture, you can get a glimpse of the inside of the training where you will see the various training simulators to the right and to the left from the table. And here we come with the real alternative program accreditation. Uh, a decision has been taken to get the center certified under the real alternative uh, project uh, program, taking into consideration its significance and the wide usage of alternative refrigerants that, as has been duly mentioned by the previous speakers, by Mr. Um, highly qualified technicians in the market. Uh, thus, uh, training has been conducted by um, a trainer uh, and five uh, uh, trainers were certified uh, under the FCAS and real alternatives components. Here you can see the names of the certified uh, technicians that have already undergone the training at this training center. Uh, I, I'm not going to read them one by one, please. Uh, no, uh, not needed them. No, 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 no. And I just, no, it's okay. If that was the last slide, I just want to underline that we managed to certify uh, 45 technicians under the real real alternatives uh, program. Uh, at the moment, uh, due to the pandemic, uh, the new training is taking place, but very soon the, the center will become very active because uh, Armenia is currently working on making the certification mandatory. Mm, so that good. would mean that very soon all the technicians will need to uh, undergo training and get certified. This well, well done. Good news. Thank you, Liana. Stay with us. Thank you for being You're with welcome. us today. Uh, 290 participants. I need now Stepan to go on the stage from Czech Republic. And we have already some questions. I will take the question at the end, if you don't mind. I have a question for Didier Coulomb. I will ask him at the end of this uh, round. So Stepan, please come with us and share your screen, please. Stepan, are you with us? I am here. Very good. You can turn your camera can you, on. We can, can you now see hear me? you. Okay, yeah. because I was in the inter interpretation mode. Yeah, I you are multitasking. <laughs> yes, it's not easy. <laughs> no, it's not easy, but we are. You're doing great. So share your screen, please. Wait a second. It's coming up. Uh, meanwhile, I can uh, say my greetings. Uh, my name is Stepan Stoyanov. I come from uh, Czech Republic and I am uh, General Secretary of uh, Czech Association of Refrigeration and Air Conditioning. And I hope I can share the presentation. Can you see it? Yes, we can see it. Okay, I'm putting it in a full mode. Yes, please. All right, so um, we don't see presentation mode, we see it uh, in uh, double slide mode. Okay. I, need to... I have two monitors, so yeah, I, need to... I can imagine. Okay, now perfect. Okay, so uh, uh, here you can see that the, our association joined also the real alternatives for life. Uh, um, uh, training program. Uh, what we do is basically the same as uh, uh, the speakers uh, uh, before me told uh, or were speaking about. We are a national association responsible for providing uh, also training and certification for FGAS. Uh, and we also do uh, other types of training uh, in, uh, in uh, connected with refrigeration, air, con air conditioning and heat pumps. Uh, so it was only logical that we joined uh, Real Alternatives for Life program. Uh, it happened in 2017 when the second round of uh, project was started. Uh, the project already uh, uh, had uh, its uh, online version. 
And uh, when, with the second phase, uh, uh, we were happy to join uh, and to share uh, information about uh, also theoretical and practical training. Uh, so in 2018-19, we trained, we, we did the train the trainer uh, uh, projects. Uh, we visited training centers in Germany, Italy, Slovakia, and Poland, which was very useful. Uh, the best benefit for us in this program as, as association and training centers was to share information and to see how, uh, how uh, uh, in other countries they do it. And uh, uh, through this, we acquired uh, really important information and useful information how to do the trainings in the Czech Republic. Also, I have to thank uh, uh, our colleagues from Slovakia because uh, we shared uh, we shared the trainings uh, at the beginning, and we were able to do the the train the trainer uh, um, events uh, together. In 2019 and 20, uh, with a grant from uh, Czech National Environmental Fund, uh, we were able to get some finan financing uh, for equipment of uh, two training centers, uh, specially made uh, or, and focused on uh, flammable uh, refrigerants. Uh, the, we built and equipped the training centers in Prague and Brno, which are the two uh, largest cities in Czech Republic. Uh, and we started the, the first training in uh, late uh, 2019. So you can see it was just uh, before um, the COVID pandemic. Uh, in 2021, we opened uh, the third training center in Ostrava, the third city in the Czech Republic. Uh, so far, uh, during uh, this period, we have conducted 15 trainings for, uh, for uh, about 140 uh, people. All these trainings were done in person. Uh, and uh, during uh, the lockdown, we had to do the trainings online. So 64 people attended our online trainings uh, on uh, flammable refrigerants. Uh, we've done six uh, in-house training trainings for employees uh, of companies uh, because uh, we, our equipment uh, enables us not only do the trainings in-house in our training centers but also to go uh, to go to to the companies and do the trainings on their side uh, so we've done trainings for for employees of uh, companies like tra train technologies hauser violent favorite transport and many others uh, which was very appreciated and besides the trainings, we were also uh, able to share the information about uh, uh, the safety of the facilities where they most they are mostly production companies. So uh, uh, the, the safety on place uh, in the production. Uh, there is on uh, there's the the e-learning program, which is very useful in this. Uh, in this program, in this project, uh, has been translated to the Czech language, and the Czech mutation has now uh, over 1,700 uh, visits, which is very nice. Uh, and uh, uh, we enforce the obligation to undergo uh, the, uh, the the training of uh, the practical uh, training uh, on. Uh, flammable refrigerants in our fire protection safety standards. So, so the safety standard uh, in the Czech Republic now says that uh, when a system uh, which is which includes flammable refrigerant is installed and serviced, uh, the person who does it uh, needs to have uh, practical training and certification through uh, uh, Real Alternatives for Life or similar uh, program. Here are some photographs uh, from the training centers. Uh, this is our first uh, training module with uh, propane. Uh, and below you can see, uh, you can see uh, some equipment. Uh, these are the other training centers. Uh, some photographs from trainings in progress. Here are the, uh, the, uh, the trainees uh, after they were able to get the, their certificates. That's all Thank from you. me.
thank, thank you, you for uh, for uh, having me here and i will switch again to the translators channel <laughs> thank you stepan thank you for your effort you're doing a great job pleasure. And uh, it's important the equipment, the laboratory should be fully equipped. And through the Real Alternatives project, uh, we always focused a lot on the equipment because the practical part in the alternative refrigerant is the most important part for safety issues. Peter, please, it's your turn from Slovakia. Thank you, Peter. You're very active, always in the normative uh, uh, parts of uh, our sectors. You're doing as well a uh, great job also in the Real Alternatives project. Please, we can see it, your screen. If you can put uh, your presentation. Yes, we can see a, a nice picture of us. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, no I, problem. I, yeah. uh, also, okay. So. Uh, I, I put on to the full on. presentation mode, please. Presentation, and I hope you can see it. Yes, oh, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, greetings from uh, Slovakia. It is this uh, small green part in the middle of Slovakia. We work according to the regulation of 517 and uh, also regulation 2015 2057, which has, uh, which has uh, substituted. Regulation 303 from the year 2008. So the regulation 2015-2067 has introduced alternative refrigerants, alternative technologies, energy, energetic efficiency, safety work. So it means it was uh, it, it it means nearly complete information about alternative refrigerants. So it was quite a big challenge uh, for trainings and certification of personnel, which we have started. Um, uh, According to this regulation since 2016, uh, using standards, uh, our experiences, technical literature from Danfoss, Sheko, and so on, and also EU project Leonardo da Vinci, Natural, Natural Refrigerants 2009. And also we have joined EU project, project Real Alternatives, and it has helped us to improve our training and exams. So certification has. Uh, we have started in the year 2016, and we have already 407 certificated technicians. On this graph, you can see you can see certificated technicians on F gases and alternative refrigerants. The ratio of alternative refrigerants is in a, a year in a yellow yellow color. And on the next graph, you can see the uh, the ratio between the category one and category two according to the regulation 2015 and 2067. Qualified technicians are needed. Production and import of new products with alternative refrigerants is on the, on the rise since 2016. Uh, we can follow quick decrease in CO2 equivalent. You can see that uh, this um, decrease is uh, nearly 50 percent. And but what is important to say that at the nearly the same level of purchased mass of, of refrigerants. Uh, and it is very important that this effect we just, we just expected, and I think it is great. On this, uh, on this uh, we can see here alternative refrigerants in new products uh, that they are on the rise. On the first graph, we can see that the DARE dominates uh, refrigerants R32, but if we take these refrigerants uh, take off, then we can see that the um, dominates uh, CO2, follows uh, ammonia, propane, uh, isobutane, and so on, and so on. How we do the trainings and tests? Uh, we can, we have um, ABC test. If in one question more answers, we have more than 400 uh, questions, and we use also graphic tests. It means uh, uh, three figures, and one of them is correct and and we can have uh, different types of such a graphic test we can do uh, also oral exam online using our technical equipment uh, for a2l and co2 co2 refrigerants and so and so on electronic system electronic system in slovakia links training and certification to reporting and data and data process processing. It means that we have a, we have a program which is on the 
is it's simply web application uh, that data can be sent by mobile, by tablets, and there is a connection between service companies and operators by QR code, and we can read uh, the data from the logbook through this QR, QR code. We can add to the logbook uh, different uh, inspections or tests, right? like regular inspection, nominal, repair, inspection, after repair, strength and tightness test, vacuum test, and so on. And also, uh, we can add uh, risk assessment. Uh, it means evaluate uh, probability, affected person, remedies, and how this risk can be, can be handled. So this is our approach to the realization with the help of this uh, project, Real Alternatives for Life. So, it's all. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. The logbook uh, online logbook is very important as well for the uh, next revision will be an important issue. I have uh, finished this um, part on uh, stakeholders experience. I think it's very nice to have this different experience from all over Europe. Uh, I will have in a moment uh, Poland, a trainee. So a recommendation that uh, who take uh, who took our training. Uh, I would like to have a, a question to Didier Coulomb, if it's possible. Is Didier Coulomb here with us? Yes. Yes, I am here. Okay, a question that is very general, but is very important. In particular, is asking, what is the future refrigerants in regard to large system air conditioning? Um, what do you think is the new refrigerant in large systems air conditioning? Uh, well, first, I'm convinced that uh, we will have to go through uh, very low GW refrigerants. Uh, you have to some transitory refrigerants, which are lower than the previous ones. But in any case, even if the next goal, for instance, the European Union is 2030, with uh, a reduction of 79% uh, of the CO of CO2 equivalent, very soon we will have uh, almost 100%. So, except in various, various uh, small applications and certainly, certainly not air conditioning. So, what kind of refrigerants we could have? It is the same also for other uh, mo mo most applications. Well, um, you have uh, the, the main problem is safety. Uh, you have this ammonia, for instance, is a, is a very good refrigerant, but you have regulations against the possibility to use ammonia in um, near. Uh, uh, a life uh, room, and uh, so for air conditioning, it could be, a, of course, a problem. CO2 is, is good, but um, you have um, uh, problems of investment costs, uh, which are generally uh, uh, a little higher. Uh, very low GLP refrigerants, such as hydrocarbons, are very flammable. So once again, you will have some regulations uh, against it, even if we try to modify the regulations in the international level and at the European level, uh, in order to, to have more possibilities to use these refrigerants. And you have uh, mildly flammable refrigerants, uh, such as HFOs or mixtures or combinations of them. The only problem with HFOs, uh, is not security, sincerely speaking. It is the fact that uh, uh, you have some the possibilities of pollutants such as TFAs, and you have some countries which now forbid uh, these refrigerants, which are not called natural refrigerants. So um, it will depend on, on the various countries uh, regarding that. Um, I saw also in the, uh, on, on the screen um, the fact that the, there is also a question regarding recovery, efficient recovery. Um, I would like to add the fact that it is certainly a problem which is not enough addressed currently. Uh, and the problem of banks, of course, is important. We cannot release the banks into the atmosphere. So we have to recover the refrigerants to reuse it, to transform it, to destroy them. Uh, we have some, some installations currently in Europe um, which can do that, but not enough. And uh, it is certainly something which uh, shall be um, developed. Thank you, oh, Didier. Okay. I think uh, your answer was perfect and was very important for this topic, of course. So we are talking about training of the present, but the future is even important because we are talking about training what is the present, but the future, we'll see alternative refrigerant. So we are going to train on alternative refrigerant in the future. 
I well, I I answer only two questions, which are uh, on the question bo uh, box, uh, which are for me. Uh, Albania, Albania would be nice to have in the real alternatives program. I've been in Albania myself. I've been in Tirana. There are two associations, so please join us, so Albania can be part of our project as well. Uh, Nikos from Cyprus is asking about the future certificate real alternatives. If it's going to be a prerequisite for a gas certificate in the near future, we don't know. We know that the gas regulation revision is going to come out, uh, uh, you know, soon, in one month probably. We hope that uh, alternative revision training and certification could be a top up added to the gas certification for safety reason mainly, as uh, Didier told uh, earlier. In Spain, is already like that. So let's see. So thank you so much for this round. Now I ask Gabriella, Igloo Poland. Thank you. Trained and certified by Prozon in Poland, in Warsaw, I believe, uh, in Varsavia, uh, in Warsaw, in Warsaw. Um, Gabriella, you have a video, right? Uh, yes. Can you share it with us? Um, I was planning to uh, put the video on uh, in a second, if that's okay. Please do it. And uh, if you can talk on top of the video, it would be very nice. Mm. Uh, no problem. Um, so, uh, because um, I would like to welcome everyone. And um, my name is Gabriela, and I am a sales specialist in the export department of the Polish company Igloo. Um, I have been working for Igloo since 2019. And I would like to introduce uh, our company and the benefits that the company and its employees have gained. Uh, thanks to the training on refrigerants in refrigeration and air conditioning carried out for us by the Prozone Foundation. Uh, the company Igloo was established in 1986 as a family business by Mr. Władysław Wodarczyk. Uh, currently, the company is run by his sons, uh, Miłosz and Przemysław. Um, Igloo is a Polish manufacturer of refrigeration equipment inverter condensing unit, con, con generation units um, for the food industry, uh, confectionery, bakery, uh, and gastronomy industry. Um, Igloo is also known as a recognized manufacturer of uh, dehumidifiers and inverter heat pumps for individual customers. Um, we have been operating in the market for over 35 years, and we are constantly developing, investing in the latest technology and human capital. Uh, we offer comprehensive cooling services, including the delivery, assembly, and servicing of equipment, as well as the design and implementation of comprehensive cooling installation based on multiple inverter units and core generation units. Uh, we also implement a new refrigeration te technologies um, based on our own innovative solutions integrated in cloud environment, allowing for remote data management. Uh, we care for the environment, taking particular care for optimizing the energy consumption of our equipment by producing modern uh, energy efficiency system based on innovative- You have five minutes, right, uh, Gabriella, right? Uh, five minutes, okay? Yes. Uh, so Take care should... not to <laughs> exceed it. Right, okay, no problem and uh, provide cooling and heating energy and to make it possible to realize um, the idea of uh, zero energy buildings, our ecological systems uh, solutions uh, enable the creation of uh, new energy management systems. Uh, the main refrigerator, uh, refrigerant used uh, in our equipment is uh, natural and ecological propane R290. Um, so I have told you a bit about Igloo, so I would like to invite you to uh, see our video I will present now. Uh, just bear with me one moment.
Eaglo. More than cooling. Um, okay, and that was the video. Um, I would just like to say a few more things, if that's okay. Please, about uh, the experience you had in training. Yes. Um, so the main, I would like to pro uh, provide you with the main benefits uh, that the company and the employees have gained uh, thanks to training in uh, refrigerants and air conditioning carried out by the Prozen Foundation with the Real Alternatives for Life training program. Uh, this training took place in January 2020 and was uh, attended by a total of 12 employees from the uh, three of our departments, uh, the R&D, Production and Service Department. It was a two-day training conducted in our company by um, lectures of the Prozon Foundation, PhD Tomasz Wokietek and PhD to uh, Piotr Kopec. Uh, the first day of the training lecture uh, of the Prozon Foundation um, included for theoretical uh, lectures and uh, the second day uh, practical exercises uh, with the use of the flammable refrigerant propan. At the end, a th th theoretical uh, and practical exam was held, which um, all training participants passed and they were awarded with the International Real Alternative Certificate, confirming the theoretical and knowledge and practical skills uh, of working with uh, flammable uh, agents. Uh, thanks to this training, um, our employees uh, gained greater and deeper theoretical knowledge about flammable refrigerants and working with, uh, with them. Um, they also acquired many new practical skills in working with flammable refrigerants. Uh, during practical exercises, they learned, among other things, um, how to safely repair leaks in the refrigerant system, filled with propane, they pr practice recovering propane from a leaking system and vacuuming uh, and nitrogizing the system several times, um, up to the point where there is no re residual propane left in the system and the system leak can be safely removed by the flam uh, flame breezing. Um, this training increased um, the knowledge of flammable uh, refrigerants and working with them also among, among our employees who did not uh, partic participate directly in the training, um, including company management. Um, as a result, um, we are able to build better and safer filling areas for our propane production uh, at the production site. Or we or originally um, intended to build um, based on our own ideas, but thanks to this training, we decided to use professional propane filling equipment from the Italian companies Galileo TP Process Equipment. Uh, we also installed, installed professional helium leak control equipment, uh, also made by the Galileo TP Process Equipment. Um, and the conclusion, thanks to this training, um, the flammable uh, refrigerants in refrigeration and air conditioning, we can better and safer design, manufacture, ruin and service our propane refrigeration devices, devices which um, also thanks to this knowledge, we are better and safer. Um, and that's all. I would like to thank you for having me today and uh, I wish you all... Uh, thank you, Gabriella. It was good to have a day. witness of our training. Uh, how was it successful uh, and how increased your uh, skill in your company. So thank you so much, uh, Gabriella, for that. Thank you. Uh, we had a few questions in the chat box about uh, uh, the contents of the training. Uh, I think I can keep it um, on uh, the training side uh, when we do training uh, itself. Uh, now I, I would like to ask uh, Game, my good friend uh, Graham Edmund from London South Bank University uh, to, to join us. I can see you very well, Graham, and uh, I would like to, to hear you as well. Yeah, I can see my face uh, as well. <laughs> very good. Hi, everyone, and thanks very much, Marco. And um, I, I'm Graham, and um, I'm representing uh, London South Bank University and the Institute of Refrigeration. And um, I, I want to talk a, li a little bit about the journey, the real journey um, that we've been through um, from real zero to real alternatives for life. Um, so I want to give you a little bit on the background to why we started doing what we're doing and why we're doing it and then also perhaps look forward to uh, potentially what the opportunities are next 
So um, Real Zero um, is the the grandfather um, for um, Real Skills and Real Alternatives um, for Life. And um, it started as an acronym um, in about 2008, 2009. And Miriam Rodway, who's from the Institute of Refrigeration and I, um, Miriam's pretty speaking next, came up with the, the, the need to focus on refrigerant leakage. And we came up with this acronym, Refrigerant Emissions and Leakage Zero. And it was a project that started in the UK then. And it's, it's fantastic to see how this has developed over the last 13 years and to see so much activity and so many people on this call. It's absolutely tremendous. And I just wanted to touch a bit, little bit about what we've achieved, what the principles of, of Real Zero and Real Alternatives um, for Life have been, and then just to look forward. So just a, just a couple of slides, if that's okay. So I mentioned already the acronym, and we initially focused on HFC and HCFC refrigerants. And um, we, had, we, we used a, an e-learning approach. And the e-learning approach was about um, delivering an industry-led um, approach focused on addressing barriers through skills and making resources freely available um, initially in the UK and now in Europe and now in so many languages ac across the world. It's tremendous. And um, this slide's a bit busy, but the picture on the left is is some of the, the early um, the the um, online training that we produced and you can see we've got the euros in the center of this because we focused very much on on the drivers for reducing leakage money and we we found that it was actually a really good driver for end users and on the right hand side these are some early results from from some of the retailers that were involved in the project. And you can see that the emissions have been driven down tremendously. This is till 2013. If you go forward 10 years, you would see this, this going for much further down towards zero, real zero. Um, so it's been really successful on HFC and HCFC refrigerants. But we didn't stop there. We saw a fantastic opportunity and a need. Didier mentioned before the, the need to focus on, on, um, on big air conditioning and the, and the driver to, to focus on, on some natural refrigerants. And the principles are very much the same in, 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 in Real Zero as it is in Real, Real Alternatives for Life. And we've got a fantastic industry-led program. We're addressing skills and barriers. We've got um, practical material, and it's freely available in many language. I'm, I'm, before I finish, okay, I just like to just just to, just to, just to sort of just really put this out there that we've got this revision for the FGAS regulations, and how tremendous would it be for this this material to be incorporated into this? Okay, it's a real opportunity. So for those of you that are on the call that are influential on this, this is a real opportunity to grab some industry-led material and to use this um, in, in in something that will that will encourage so many more to 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 adopt. Final slides. This is some of the tremendous work Marco you've seen there. Marco has been brilliant on the project and, um, and, and, and we're not going to stop there. Refrigerant um, leakage is something but we also have to focus on on energy efficiency. And um, we have a program in the Institute of Refrigeration looking at focusing on energy efficiency. If you want to get involved in here in this, this is my email address, mademeg.lsbu.ac.uk. Feel free to contact us. There's a real opportunity, to, not just to, to stop the journey, to continue it for many years to come. So thanks very much, Marco. Tremendous session. I'm going to stop there. Thank you, Graham. Was great, uh, great history of uh, real alternatives. We started, uh, I think, in 2013 or 14. We started uh, with uh, this journey, so it was uh, a great. And you started before with uh, real skills and real zero, so it was a great job. Uh, I asked Miriam to connect. I asked also Miriam to say a few words about women in refrigeration, if you can, because Baron Airbay is asking for it. I also say that Israel want to join Real Alternatives. Welcome. 
If you want to do training now with an available training center, okay, you can choose wherever you want to go. You know, there is no preferences, but it would be nice to have Israel in the group. So thank you so much. One more thing before I leave to uh, Miriam. I, we have a lot of questions. The technical one will be answered during the training sessions. So with uh, Marino and with Kivanch, but also take a note that we have a LinkedIn uh, uh, page, LinkedIn page. All the questions will be put in the LinkedIn page and will be also answered in that page. So we all have connection and we join each other also in this LinkedIn page of Real Alternatives. Miriam. Thank you, Marco. Now, uh, you show my, you see my screen well, yes? Very good, uh, full good. screen, perfect, everything's perfect. Oh, good, right, so um, we will go go uh, quickly because I know you're very keen to try the training that, that will follow this uh, short talk. I wanted to remind everybody that as well as the practical training provided by our partners that we have heard from today, there is also the possibility to do some theory training just the knowledge, not the practical, online. This has been very important in recent years when training centers have had to close for safety and COVID. And now you can still continue to use our e-learning. It is free for everyone to use. It is a great tool for anyone in any business, but also it's a great tool to support the trainers in helping the people coming on their training course to understand some theory before they arrive so in the training. So it makes good use, good economic use for people to prepare before they come to a training and it costs them then less time. We understand training is a very big investment for people. So the e-learning element gives them some theory knowledge. It is available if you come to our website, realalternatives.eu. And there you will see, here is a picture of our website. Here you will be able to register for the e-learning. And for those of you who have not tried the real alternatives before, who are on our call today, nearly 300 people, you can register here and you can see the material and see the good quality material. And we hope, as Graham said, that you will share it with policymakers, with your environment departments and encourage the EU revision to use. This is available. It is tested. It is developed by people like you in the industry. From this website, you can use, there is many material, there is booklets to look at. There is also the list of all the different countries involved in our project. If you wish to follow up with somebody who's spoken today or from another country, you can go to this website and find the details. And the website is available in many languages, multiple languages. You select which language you want to use, it will be already translated for you. So if you go to our e-learning, you must register, of course, the e-learning. And when you register, you will find you then have access to nine separate modules. The most important introduction to what is an alternative refrigerant, and then the second most important safety and risk management. Didier also spoke to this earlier about the issues around alternatives, refrigerants, high pressure, the uh, risk of flammability. So these two modules are essential for anybody to study the e-learning before they continue. Here, I just give you some examples of how this works and some of the topics within each e-learning. And as you complete each section, there is a little blue tick, which will show you to help you to progress. Another example page, the differences in design. So our program is not to teach people to be refrigeration engineers or designers. It is to teach them the difference when they're using low GWP alternatives, how they need to do things a little bit different to what they already do. We talked about recovery also in one of the questions. We have a whole section here explaining how to recover safely in our maintenance area. And also to remind you that we have videos. We have done training videos within the e-learning to make it very clear how this works on live systems and also on training systems. Here are the different uh, videos. They are embedded within the e-learning, but you can also go to YouTube. If you go to YouTube and search Real Alternatives for Life or UCLL Energy, you can find our training videos. These are freely available for everyone to use to support training in their businesses and with their trainees. 
Uh, there is a basic test system within our e-learning. This is not an exam, not an assessment, just to test progress in the learning to help people if they have understood. And certificates, if you complete the full e-learning, you can get a little white certificate. You can download this. This is not assessment, just a certificate. It's very different to the blue certificates that we've seen pictures of today with our partners where they have done a in-person training and a full practical and theory test. Here they can get the blue certificate. On the right is orange certificate. This was given out during the time when training was not possible in real training centers. This was given out as a, as a, um, a more flexible option for remote training from centers. So, to, so you understand how we are flexible with you. Um, and just to remind you, if you are from a country which is not currently involved, please go to our website. Here you can find out how you can get more involved. If you are from an employer and wish to do some training, you can find the list of the training providers available in your country from the website, and you can talk to them to set up or join a course. And of course, Marco said we had lots of dissemination activity. Marco asked me also to say a word about women in RACHP. You see I have whoop, here behind me <laughs> and also on the screen. The UK, we have a, a strong network uh, to encourage uh, women to join our industry. Uh, we talked earlier about the need to improve skills and the need to have many technicians available. And this is something we are encouraging people to do. And we are very proud also to work with the International Institute of Refrigeration on their ICAR Careers in Refrigeration project, doing a great deal of research and regular events at the International Institute of Refrigeration conferences to encourage women who are working in the industry to support each other and improve their training. In the UK, we're doing practical training for people who are working in support roles and they go along. I think this week we have a workshop where they'll be doing refrigerant handling and air conditioning system operation. So there are lots of things that we can all do to support and address careers and skills in our industry. And I'm very pleased that so many people have joined us and we're working together to improve skills for the future and for the achieving of our all low GWP aims for the environment. So thank you, Marco, this is it. For me. Thank you so much. Uh, I can see that there are many questions and also answers in the chat box. I just uh, uh, reshared an answer from Didier Coulomb in, uh, in the chat box uh, about uh, uh, where we can have more information about uh, facilitation on future refrigerants, uh, right, uh, Didier? Um, you, you want to answer this one while uh, um, Marino Bassi is going to connect uh, uh, for uh, the next part. And thank you to Miriam for uh, his uh, e-learning experience. Uh, it was very useful, of course. We need to know how to access this training, which is most of it is free of charge, as we said. And uh, if you do, you know, the main part is practical. Of course, you have to go to a training center to do the practical part, which is the most important part. Marco, so, so just, just very shortly uh, to complete uh, my um, present my my answer to the questions and uh, the questions which which was in the chat. First, regarding the possibilities of systems um, for uh, low global warming refrigerants, uh, don't uh, forget the possibilities to have indirect systems. And for instance, uh, the the district cooling is uh, something which is expanding all over the world because it uh, allows people to have uh, some uh, centralization of, of the risks, which, are, which is better for the air conditioning especially. And uh, it is used in Paris, in Stockholm, uh, in, in a lot of various uh, towns now. Uh, regarding the possibilities to have very new technologies, uh, I would like to insist on the fact that we have very few possibilities currently uh, regarding the refrigerants, there were some studies, especially in the US, in order to check all the possibilities of molecules. And there are very few molecules which could be uh, new molecules, and they are very near the current molecules. So we, we can have a lot of various new molecules, but near the current ones with the same kinds of problems with the current ones. We also try to have um, to develop some non refrigerant some, some technologies without refrigerants. And we organize every two, every two years uh, conferences, thermal conferences on magnetic refrigeration and uh, other solid state technologies. 
There are some possibilities, but currently it is only uh, used and possible with the, the current technologies for very small systems. So regarding the questions of uh, very large systems in air conditioning, currently we don't have uh, very new possibilities, but we try to explore possibilities. And I hope that in a, in a few years, it, is, it will be possible to give you other solutions. Currently, it is not very, very possible. Thank you, Didier, for complimenting uh, the answer. It was very good. Uh, I asked Marino Bassi to come uh, on the floor. I think I can see Marino. I think I can hear you, Marino. No, I cannot hear you. No, I don't hear you, Marino. And you are not in mute. No, I don't hear you, Marino. Marino, can you please try to unplug and then plug again the the headset, please? Prova a togliere e rimettere il, le cuffie. In the meanwhile, they are asking Greek. Greek is available. Greek, it is in our system, but uh, uh, we are just uploading now. So Greek will be in a in few days uh, available because there was some problem, but Greek, it is available, Greek, it is available. Marino? Can you listen to me now? Yes, it was quick, ah, good, very good. good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can you share yeah. your screen, please? Yes, sure. So now we are starting the training. The training about flammable refrigerants. Marino Bassi is a trainer of Centro Studi Galileo, he went everywhere in the world, we can say. You have been to Caribbean to do training, right? You've been to Granada no. doing training. Nice uh, training, that one. Right? <laughs> Caribbean was nice, right? <laughs> yes. Was the real alternative training. So yes. uh, Marino will teach us about flammable refrigerants. Thank you. Uh, keep uh, the microphone vicino. Keep the microphone closer. Yes. Can you, it's better now? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, so a quick introduction from uh, my side. Uh, uh, from many years, I am in the refrigeration uh, field, uh, engaged uh, with uh, Embraco and now with uh, Nitec, uh, the Nitec uh, group, with uh, Centro Studi Galileo. I already said sometimes that I have the record because I hold the first training of the Center Studi Galileo. And uh, regarding flammable uh, refrigerant is uh, the part of my uh, training. Uh, flammable refrigerant started uh, again, let's say, after the first period of refrigeration, starting again to be used uh, uh, 30 years ago, practically, 1992, 1993. Uh, with Centro Studi Galileo, we hold uh, uh, several training, even before the alternatives. I can say Post that uh, with the uh, real alternatives, the, uh, the life, let you say, of the trainers and the trainee is much more comfortable. It's, uh, it's considered for the user and also for the trainer an excellent training. Okay, the scope of my presentation is to evidence uh, the good practice for flammable refrigerant. I say that is a, a, a demonstrative training. Uh, why? Because uh, what you will see, uh, the, the information, the, the uh, data, the recommendation is uh, extracted from the modules uh, that Miriam indicated before, as uh, they are in the modules without uh, elaboration. So it's possible to have uh, a uh, clear idea of the content and the validity of this uh, training. Uh, my presentation is uh, organized uh, in uh, uh, this part, uh, flammable refrigerant statistics, safety design, maximum refrigerant charge in the installation, and safety repairing. I will insist more on safety repairing because here is uh, the uh, moment of the uh, higher uh, hazard uh, for people, for the technicians. Uh, as uh, Mirja said before, real alternatives is not a training to form technicians on the refrigeration field. It assumes that already they know when they have skin of the standard refrigerant, uh, as you see. But it focuses on the difference between alternative refrigerants and, as you see, 
with particular attention to these safety aspects. That is the more, uh, the, the dominant uh, argument. Flammable refrigerant characteristic, let me start with this. Uh, here is the list of refrigerant uh, inside the alternatives. <coughs> the flammable refrigerant that I speak about are this group of the uh, R32, uh, two HFO and the uh, AC. Also ammonia is flammable, but the uh, first, uh, the dominant hazard, hazard is uh, the toxicity, so uh, it's not considered in uh, this uh, training I am doing. Here are the, the table with the characteristics of the alternative uh, refrigerants, uh, the flammable, let you say, <laughs> and uh, there are the type of refrigerant, HFC, HFO, and hydrocarbons. The key fact that is the key hazard, uh, lower flammability uh, for uh, HFC and HFO, higher flammability for hydrocarbons, the GWP is uh, close uh, to one. And uh, typical applications, uh, as you can see, the uh, uh, hydrocarbon are mainly dedicated to domestic and small commercial system for R600A, chiller and integral system for supermarket uh, and other location, and the same for uh, propylene. Uh, saturation temperature uh, indicate uh, the proper application, however, they are used also uh, for, for example, propane is used both in low temperature and medium temperature uh, application, <coughs> applications. Um, we are speaking about uh, flammable refrigerants. Uh, the safety classification uh, regarding the refrigerants is in the uh, ISO 817. And uh, also EN378 include the A2L um, uh, refrigerants. The classification is uh, made uh, on this uh, parameter, the lower flammability level in percent in air by volume, <coughs> ETO combustion, and flame propagation, the burning velocity. The threshold uh, uh, for uh, this uh, parameter is uh, 3.5 for the LFL, 19,000 kilojoule for heat on combustion and uh, um, maximum 10 uh, centimeter per second for the burning velocity. On the base of these uh, uh, characteristics, the various refrigerants are classified. One that is not flammable when tested at 60 degrees C, this is important, is 60 degrees C. Other, like the NIST, they tested 20 degrees C, and for example, R134A uh, said E is not flammable for NIST, but flammable for uh, ISO and uh, EN378. <clears throat> In this table is indicated the uh, uh, characteristic regarding flammability of these uh, refrigerants. <clears throat> and you see the A2L classification that is the mildly uh, uh, flammable and the high flammable uh, hydrocarbons. It's interesting to note uh, the uh, low flammability level in kilos uh, for um, cubic meter. It's easier to use this uh, uh, <coughs> unit uh, when calculate the refrigerant charge, of course. And you can see that the low flammability level of hydrocarbons is uh, uh, ten, about seven, eight times uh, lower than the uh, uh, HFO and uh, AC in this, uh, in this list. Uh, um, the auto ignition temperature, uh, temperature is another uh, source uh, of ignition for flammable refrigerants. And the PL, PL is the practical limit that is indicated in EN378. And this used for simplify the calculation to determine the maximum acceptable amount of refrigerant in occupied space. DPL is 20% of the low flammability limit. And uh, uh, as you can see, it's possible to charge system uh, using uh, HFO, uh, using the A2L, uh, with the refrigerant charge uh, practically eight times higher than uh, using uh, hydrocarbons. Uh, furthermore, the EN378 has a coefficient of 1.5 for the A2L, so the refrigerant charge <coughs> is uh, practically even 12 times more can be acceptable for this. 
It depends on the application, of course, but it accepts much higher refrigerant charge. <clears throat> and not uh, important uh, to say for the, the HFC and HFO is that uh, uh, these uh, refrigerants uh, form toxic uh, products uh, of the composition when they burn. And they form hydrogen fluoride HF that uh, with moisture become hydrofluoric acid and uh, uh, has a severe uh, impact uh, on person uh, in animals <coughs> if uh, become in contact or inhalate uh, this. The hazard with the A2L is greater than with the HFC, normal HFC, uh, A1 HFC, because they can uh, burn uh, in the presence of uh, open flame. Um, the combustion to have a combustion, the condition is to have fuel oxygen and source of ignition. For the flammable refrigerants, uh, you, have you have the combustion if there are a flammable mixture, that is a mixture in air with refrigerants uh, uh, concentrated between the lower flammability limit and the upper flammability limit. And uh, to have a, a flame, you need to have an ignition in the flammable area, the flammable zone, you need to have a source of ignition active at that moment. So uh, uh, the concept of safety using flammable refrigerant is to keep separate these two elements and uh, to work to minimize the leakage and to exclude source of ignition where there um, can be present uh, a, a potential flammable atmosphere. Uh, let me see how this apply for the safety design, just uh, make an, uh, an example for uh, designing the, the cabinet or the application. <clears throat> In order to design to reduce the risk, no source of ignition has to be inside a, a potentially flammable zone. So the source of ignition has to be removed from uh, this zone. If a leakage, if uh, uh, a leakage can form a flammable concentration around an electrical device, this device has to be no sparking type. <clears throat> and uh, this uh, um, flow charge uh, that uh, is in the alternative, of course, uh, uh, show what is the process to ensuring uh, the refrigerant uh, system are safe. Uh, step by step, uh, very quickly, uh, uh, step one uh, has to carry out uh, the definition of the declassification of the zone or the flammable uh, area, uh, uh, making tests, simulating leakage with flammable refrigerants. Then it's necessary to identify source of ignition within the potential flammable zone. I think so that the problem is there. Uh, sorry for this. So I was speaking about the option to uh, eliminate this issue or to reduce uh, these issues. It's very, it's quite impossible to eliminate uh, all the risk. <clears throat> so move away from the source of ignition, the uh, from the, the ignition source, the ignition source of the uh, uh, flammable uh, zone, <clears throat> as also recommended by the standard replace the source of ignition with uh, a suitable one, that is a no sparking one. <clears throat> and uh, also airflow is important in order to uh, reduce the concentration of the uh, flammable, uh, of the leakage <clears throat> uh, in order not becoming flammable, to keep below the flammable uh, limit, uh, low flammable limit or locate the source of emission in an enclosure that doesn't transmit outside uh, the uh, uh, flame. <clears throat> and this can be costly for the small uh, cabin. Uh, regarding uh, uh, ventilation, uh, uh, ventilation can uh, negate the need for changes of electrical devices or put them in the enclosure. It can be used the condenser uh, fan uh, motor, the condenser fan, to run constantly, or uh, a supplementary fan that is switched on uh, with uh, uh, a 
condenser fan uh, is uh, stopped. It's important to uh, make tests to be sure that, uh, uh, to consider that in case of fault condenser, or if the, fail, uh, the motor fail, uh, uh, it can reduce uh, the uh, uh, availability of airflow and uh, care has to be taken, especially if this is the primary protection method for the source condition. Regarding the installation, I just refer to the maximum charge size. <coughs> uh, the flammable uh, refrigerants uh, have a uh, uh, charge size uh, limitation in many applications. And the EN378 provide charge size restriction for uh, the uh, air conditioning uh, heat pump and uh, for all the application. The uh, uh, definition of the maximum allowable, allowable refrigerant charge is based on this parameter. The refrigerant characteristics that uh, I said before in the past uh, table that I saw you before, and the access category, that is uh, the uh, uh, occupation of the different area, open to the public or not, uh, the type of system that if it is for comfort, uh, cooling or heating, or other application, that means if it is for uh, refrigeration, and where is located the location of the equipment. On this parameter, it's possible to go to the table C1 and C2 on the EN378. I can show here this table because uh, uh, the copyright of this, uh, so it's the infringement if I show this, uh, uh, this table. The table one is uh, for toxicity uh, as dominant hazard, and the table two is for flammable refrigerant uh, A2 and A3. Uh, um, a quick explanation on the assess category uh, is uh, three label A, B, and C. A is for general entrance, where any people can go there, enter there, without knowing uh, personal safety precaution, like uh, hospital, theater, and et cetera, supermarket. B, only limited number of people can enter and uh, at least some of them they uh, have, are informed about the safety precaution is laboratory uh, manufacturing normal let me say manufacturing and office building and uh, restricted uh, access uh, <coughs> category c uh, that is not open to the public and all the authorized person who can go there and they know uh, the safety uh, precaution. And this is, for example, the, the uh, machinery room uh, and the certain facility, chemical, uh, food, etc. The equipment location has uh, four classification. Class one, class one, when all is located in the occupied space, all the refrigeration equipment. Uh, class two, part of the equipment is uh, uh, outside on, uh, or in a machinery room. Uh, um, then all the equipment can be in machinery room or outside, class three, and class four uh, is a ventilated enclosure. Let me make uh, let me make an example of the charge calculation, thinking, for example, to the uh, delicatessen encounter of 350 gram uh, of propylene uh, installed in a supermarket, and the intention is to define what is uh, uh, the, the minimum uh, room volume that uh, can be, uh, where can be allowed to install a system with 350 grams. So the refrigerant uh, is propylene, and we remember that is in uh, class uh, A3. Uh, uh, so the table two uh, apply. The assess category is a supermarket, is open to the public, so is A. <clears throat> the application is not for comfort, it's for refrigeration. And the equipment location is, in, is an integral cabinet, so is all the system in the occupied uh, um, uh, Going on the table C2, it's possible to find for all these A3, uh, uh, that is uh, the table C2, uh, assess A, order application, and classification one, 
is possible to find the limit that is 20% of global probability level multiply the room volume and uh, they have a cap no more than 1.5 kilos. <clears throat> uh, so the minimum volume is the charge divided by zero two and the low probability level that is 38 square meter. So using uh, this table is uh, quite easy to define the uh, maximum allowable charge or the maximum uh, volume on the uh, ambient. Now let me go to the central part, uh, like I said, the, the real topic uh, of this uh, presentation, that is maintenance and uh, repair. <clears throat> uh, um, as I said before, this is the most uh, critical uh, activity on a system with uh, uh, flammable refrigerant. And uh, it's necessary to carry out uh, a risk assessment in order to define the risk linked to the operation and define the control measures and adopt uh, the control measure to limit uh, the uh, level of uh, the risk. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, the different property, the flammability of these uh, refrigerants uh, affect uh, how the system are serviced and uh, maintained. <clears throat> Here, is a, a list of, to say, uh, precaution and care that has to be adopted for the flammable refrigerants. It's necessary to work in a very well ventilated and free from source of ignition uh, area environment. Mm. And, uh, the equipment has to be free from source of ignition. The leak test uh, has to be carried out with the proper sensitive uh, and safe uh, instruments of safe uh, detector <coughs> for uh, both uh, the, the, for, uh, the flammable refrigerants. The charge uh, amount in the system, uh, mainly with uh, hydrocarbons, is most critical because the charge is uh, lower than when using uh, SFC or SFO is less than 50% or 40% more or less of the charge of the standard system. <laughs> and uh, regarding the recovery or disposal of the refrigerant, is uh, uh, mandatory to recover the HFC, HF4 refrigerants, and uh, while the uh, hydrocarbons uh, is uh, uh, allowed uh, to vent uh, to in safety condition in the, uh, in the ambient. Uh, if the amount is uh, small, uh, like for example 150 grams or, or let me say also 300 grams, <laughs> but otherwise also the AC refrigerant has to be recovered. <clears throat> uh, um, we put here the, uh, 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 the anti-sparking uh, uh, apparatus uh, to use uh, for the technician because the, uh, we didn't spoke before, because the HFC have a very uh, limited ignition uh, energy, uh, even fraction of millijoule, <clears throat> so the electrical static spark uh, can ignite the uh, hydrocarbon, not the HFO, or the flammable HFO. Uh, the uh, real alternative also include uh, um, an example of risk assessment uh, that uh, can be an interesting example uh, <clears throat> to start to consider how to organize the risk uh, assessment. Uh, um, it, uh, it refers to the recovery of propylene in the supermarket and the risk assessment in general has to consider the likelihood of the event and the consequences of the event. In this case, there are three classes, let me say, three rank of likelihood and three rank of severity. And when combined, the probability of the event with the severity, the combination has to be at a low risk level. So uh, we have to work in this corner of the diagram <clears throat> and uh, considering the situation and adopting all the necessary measures. Here it makes a short example, uh, like uh, 
I said before, uh, the refrigerator, who are the person at risk? Is the refrigeration technician and uh, show uh, start? Which hazard we may consider? There are several hazards. Uh, let me start from the combustion. What to do? Uh, we have uh, to work, uh, it's also uh, forbidden by regulation, to work uh, in an open uh, uh, area, uh, open to the public in the supermarket. So work outside the trading hours, uh, separate, uh, close, or make a barrier around the working uh, <clears throat> uh, machine where you work, and so on, in order to minimize the risk and uh, because you need to have uh, uh, together uh, probability and severity, the risk, uh, the, the total risk uh, is the, the, the uh, like uh, you would multiply the, the severity and has to be in a low uh, class uh, <coughs> level. And uh, in, uh, in this uh, condition, it's possible to go on and to proceed with the repair and cooperation. The preventive action to do uh, is better to repeat, uh, not only in that list, but the alternative make all this list. The area must be very well ventilated if it's necessary in an artificial ventilation. A forced ventilation is necessary to use uh, a uh, fan uh, ATEX approved. Is uh, in recommended is necessary to use uh, a monitor detector in order if you open the system if you work invasively on the system to open the system you is necessary to use a detector place the detector close to the system on the floor because uh, apart uh, the ammonia all the other refrigerant are heavier than air <coughs> And no source of ignition within more three meters from potential explosive atmosphere. Three meters is valid for a small quantity of refrigerant like the one in uh, the integral system. <coughs> Every fire extinguisher, extinguisher at least uh, two kilos. Now let me see some uh, details. The uh, um, detector. Uh, cannot uh, be zeroed out uh, in the background flammable refrigerant label. If not, uh, uh, the uh, uh, lecture, it doesn't represent uh, the real uh, uh, amount of uh, refrigerant in the ambient. He has to give an alarm uh, with uh, uh, noise, audible, invisible, when uh, it reaches the, uh, <coughs> the PL, uh, when it is 20% of the lower from the level. level. <clears throat> the fire extinguisher has to be the fire, has to be of the type of dry power or CO2, and uh, is mandatory to use this type of, of uh, extinguisher only during transport of the flammable refrigerants according to the IDR uh, regulation. Vacuum pump, well, several uh, standard tools normally used for uh, SFC, <coughs> not flammable SFC, uh, can also be used uh, with flammable refrigerant. The important is that they are not uh, ignition sources. <coughs> Most uh, standard vacuum pump can be safely used if only the on off switch is the potential source of ignition. So it's possible to close the switch <coughs> of the, the pump and then plug uh, the pump in a plug uh, away from the potential flammable area at least uh, three meters. The discharge uh, of the vacuum pump uh, normally it doesn't, uh, uh, it doesn't generate uh, hazard because the, the, the concentration is very low. Uh, it's necessary, however, to work in a well-ventilated uh, area. The uh, uh, recovery equipment <coughs> uh, is different. They have uh, several switches, not only the on-off, but relay pressure switches. And uh, uh, is uh, inside, practically, is moving uh, the flammable refrigerants 
So uh, the recovery machine has to be at x ax right uh, has to be ax up to, to be used. <coughs> the same for the uh, uh, for the detector uh, has to be a suitable uh, electronic flammable gas detector. Suitable it means safe and sensible to the uh, refrigerant that has to uh, detect. Most of the HFC, standard HFC uh, uh, and ICFC uh, leak detector are not suitable and also are not safe for using with flammable refrigerant. Uh, some details uh, after the uh, details on the equipment, some details on the uh, operation. Uh, uh, that some of them are common with other uh, uh, refrigerants. Evacuate the recovery cylinder to remove area before filling uh, with the flammable refrigerants. Do not mix uh, flammable refrigerants of different type uh, in the same recovery cylinder. This is an important uh, advice. When recovering hydrocarbon refrigerant, do not fill the recovery cylinder with more than 45% of the HFC uh, safe fill weight. This is due to the fact of the different density of the uh, <coughs> uh, uh, hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons, uh, uh, the refrigerant charge of hydrocarbons in the system, we say, is less than 50%, is around 40% of the refrigerant charge of the SFC, SFO. The same is valid also when filling in a, uh, a recovery cylinder. Pay attention not to fill it uh, more than 45% as the FSC safe uh, fill weight. <clears throat> Brazing, uh, uh, unbrazing. Unbrazing is the most uh, critical operation because uh, there are an open flame. So all the recommendations said before have to be applied. Uh, the area has to be continuously monitored with the refrigerant detector placed uh, on, the, on the floor practically. And ensure a good ventilation, uh, as preferable force with an uh, AX uh, uh, fan. Uh, um, if the quantity of flammable refrigerant is hydrocarbon and if the quantity is low, it's possible to vent. If not, it's necessary to uh, recovery. Uh, the uh, recovery machine, <coughs> uh, when you recover, is uh, uh, very important to pay attention to recover all the refrigerants from the entire system. It means from all the parts of the system. I can tell that uh, uh, I am informed of an accident that happened. Fortunately, it was uh, not serious that it happened three years ago because it was open with uh, flame, a system not fully evacuated. In one part, still there was a uh, refrigerant. Uh, um, then run the recovery machine under vacuum uh, to be sure to eliminate as much as possible from all the parts uh, the refrigerant. Uh, fill the system with oxygen free dry nitrogen in order to wash the system. Then this can be vent in open atmosphere in a safe condition, of course, even if the quantity is very limited of the uh, flammable refrigerant inside the washed uh, nitrogen. And then at this moment, <coughs> it's possible to embrace. And, uh, but, uh, the torch has to be switched on only if the air is well ventilated and monitored with the refrigerant detector. Uh, in any case, the preferable procedure is not to embrace, but cut the connection with a tube cutter. And it's important, and there's evidence again, ensure that all the refrigerant has been removed from the system. Brazing is a more simple operation, is similar to uh, the A1 uh, refrigerants. Uh, uh, it's important to continuously monitor the air in any case with flammable refrigeration detector, have a good ventilation, and then it's possible to uh, brace. Having, uh, uh, as also is necessary to do uh, with uh, the uh, A1 refrigerants, uh, having a flash uh, flash in the system uh, at, uh, 
the proper low pressure with dry uh, nitrogen. The evacuation, we said before that uh, <clears throat> it's important to check to ensure that the on-off switch is the only source ignition. So you can use also a standard uh, vacuum uh, machine, vacuum pump. It's preferable to have the, the AX uh, uh, <clears throat> vacuum pump in any case in order to avoid uh, destruction and avoid uh, the, the, the use, uh, uh, avoid, avoid to take the precaution to switch on and then plug, uh, plug away. In any case, the standard one can be plugged uh, away, as we said before, at least uh, three meters. Uh, <clears throat> The charging, the charging uh, is uh, you are moving uh, flammable refrigerant, so you need again to have the monitoring uh, <clears throat> to monitor the area with the detector. Have an excellent ventilation uh, for the AC, is, as for the other refrigerant, but uh, for the AC, it's important to use not the LPG, but uh, the uh, AC grade, uh, the two at least 99.5% of purity of the refrigerant. <clears throat> then <clears throat> uh, pay attention, do not overcharge the system because as we said before, approximately 45% uh, of the charge is sufficient compared to the uh, HFC system. And uh, in the integral system, in the small system, where the charge is limited, maybe is 100 grams, 150 grams. Uh, <clears throat> uh, um, the tolerance uh, uh, is important to keep the proper tolerance. Uh, 5% is a good tolerance if you have 300, 300 grams. If you have 150 grams, 1%, uh, 1.5% uh, of tolerance is, is much. Uh, <clears throat> the, if it's necessary to replace uh, components, uh, mechanical or electrical components. <clears throat> so it's important to use uh, like uh, for like components. Uh, also the fan motor, for example, uh, has to be uh, uh, spark free from mechanical friction. So the, the fan is in uh, aluminum or plastic. Uh, so it's important to change uh, like for like as the cabinet producers uh, produce the cabinet assembled on the cabinet. Uh, uh, it's important to ensure that the sealed electrical boxes are correctly resealed before to put in, uh, in operation the, the machine. And also to not modify the component is like for like, but uh, do not relocate the components because uh, if the component was uh, placed outside the uh, uh, potential flammable zone as defined by the leak test that we said when speaking about the safety on the uh, cabinet, on the system, uh, you have not to remove, you have not to relocate in other places. Uh, here is an example, example for the uh, small compressors, uh, for the small hermetic compressors, <coughs> the standard compressor have an, all, an open uh, overload protector that in case of trip make a sparks, the flammable refrigerant has to use a uh, closed uh, uh, protector in order to avoid that spark that uh, can emit the external flammable, potential flammable uh, <coughs> atmosphere. The same for the starting rig. Real alternatives, uh, the models you relate, um, are all related to theories. Uh, uh, practice is extremely important in uh, preventing accident. Uh, um, uh, field experience, uh, I said, uh, I already told one uh, to you, for example, field experiences have evidence some accident for repairing operation. So the practical training and, and eye prevention relevance. Practical training uh, uh, is possible to do this uh, in uh, uh, the uh, approved uh, uh, training provider center, like in Italy, uh, the, the Centro Studi Galileo that I said before. <clears throat> and after uh, 
uh, having the theoretical and the practical training or is possible to get, or only theoretical, but practically is much better, of course, is possible to have a certificate of uh, um, completion of the assessment or real alternative uh, for life. <clears throat> well, uh, I try to go quickly <clears throat> to uh, recover the time. <clears throat> um, I concluded my uh, presentation. Uh, I am uh, open Thank you very much, Marino. for questions. Uh, there are many questions for you. Uh -huh. so I would like to start with the one from Christos. Uh, he asks, based on your experience and the dangers that you have shown, especially flammability, um, what, what are the items that must be taken in consideration when there is an installation of equipment in risers or on roofs, especially in warm climate countries? Uh, will this affect the firefighting design of a building? Well, uh, <clears throat> the, the installation of flammable refrigerants, it depends uh, uh, a lot from the local uh, regulation, from the building code uh, and uh, from the, uh, uh, and the, fire, uh, the fire bodies. Uh, I can tell that in Italy is very complicated the matter and uh, in Italy recently, two uh, years ago, if I remember well, uh, the, the regulation, uh, there are uh, regulations that approve the use of A2L refrigerants in air conditioning. Uh, normally, uh, application of flammable refrigerants like hydrocarbon up to 150 grams, uh, according to the regulation 335 to 89, is uh, possible to install without particular uh, uh, regulation, without particular uh, other requirements. Okay, thank you. So I would like to go then to the next question. Uh, it is again for you, but it talks about France. So in case we need any uh, deepening, I see that we have Mr. Colombo so with us. Uh, the question goes from Jean-Francois. In France, the use of LFR is associated to an assessment risk, which has to be certified by an accredited company, as a PAVE or Veritas. Full responsibility in case of accident will, uh, uh, will be on the refrigeration company who installed the system with LFR. So you should insist on this. A low flammable refrigerant still remains flammable. So in case... <laughs> The responsibility <laughs> is the responsibility. It depends if the system is a, a, a monoblock, is an integral system, and the responsibility, and if it's below 150 grams, of course, the responsibility is uh, of, the, of the producers. If it's a system that needs to be installed, so uh, the operator is responsible for the installation. Uh, <clears throat> So the liability, uh, it remains uh, on, uh, uh, on the producer and on the installer. No. I see. Even, so even I... following all the regulation, mm. even using uh, AX uh, approved uh, uh, components, even following all the regulation, in any case, this uh, it doesn't free from liability. Uh, who produce the machine, who install the machine is responsible for uh, his actions. So you say no big change. Yeah. Is there anything you want to add, Mr. Coulomb, in, since France was brought up or the, the answer was fine for you? Please? Uh, uh, no. can, can, uh, it's difficult for me to re hear you. Um, ah, okay. Uh, you, you asked me a question, I, I, I don't understand. No, 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 I, there was just France that was brought up in the picture, so in case you wanted to add anything, but Marino was already very comprehensive with his uh, reply, so. Thank you. Okay. Uh, can I add okay. from the, the UK on this issue also, this is a uh, pressure equipment uh, regulation, the pressure equipment directive requires this depending on the category of jointing, so yes. it yes. really is about the category of jointing and it applies not just France, this is everybody and the UK also, we have some guidance on, on this yeah. issue. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, I think that was, uh, thank you, Miriam. What I think that what is important to say is that EN uh, um, 379 regulation, the part two of uh, EN uh, regulation is harmonized with uh, the directive, with the regulation, with the law in Europe uh, for the PID and uh, uh, machine directive. Uh, uh, but uh, is not uh, uh, harmonized with uh, uh, ATEX, is not harmonized with the uh, safety uh, uh, requirements for machine and for the um, working ambient. So uh, is a following in any case the standard uh, uh, is not a presumption that uh, you are in line with the ATEX request with the uh, safety request for flammability or explosion. Yeah. Thank you, Marino. I would like to give you, to ask you one more question from Pavel. He is asking uh, whether a mix is possible in a recovery cylinder of R410A, not flammable, but 50% R125 and 50% R32 with R32, which is an A2L. Uh, uh, no, the recommendation is not to mix. It's not to mix in any case the refrigerant. Yeah. No, it's not to mix. Also thinking to an eventual uh, uh, upgrade uh, of this, uh, uh, of the refrigerant, for example. And uh, in any case, the flammable refrigerant, are, uh, when it's recovered, I'll consider an hazard, hazardous, uh, a dangerous uh, uh, item. Uh, also for transportation, for example. So uh, it's better, it's better, it's required not to uh, mix uh, refrigerants. Yeah. Mainly thinking to the flammable refrigerants. Even the oil used in the compressor used with flammable refrigerants after evacuation and so still contain a small percentage of flammable refrigerants and should not be mixed with the other oil uh, from uh, other compressor using uh, a1 HFC. Yeah. Thank you very much, Marino. Your lesson, of course, is always super. It's a pleasure. Thank you. And uh, very clear, especially. Uh, there is also one more question from Antonio Alfredo, but I would leave that for later because actually it does not really involve flammable refrigerants, but the real alternative certificate. Mm -hmm. so okay. I would like now to move to the next lesson, thanking Marino again. Okay, and, uh, yes. it's okay thank you. Welcoming Kvanj, our next speaker. He is a um, Turkish, from Turkey, a member, a board member of Sociad, which is also a stakeholder of this program. So Kvanj, thank you again. And uh, the floor is yours. We see not the full screen, but again, the double, double slides. So I guess it depends a little on top. There is the display settings. I think. I can do it right now. Uh, or also hide presenter view is fine. Just hide right presenter here. view? Yes. Right now, it's OK? Uh, more or less. Can you try again to make it full screen? OK, now it's good. Thank you very much. Hey, everyone. This is the last slide of the day. And I'm getting used to be this situation. So let's try to see about to CO2 refrigeration and CO2 in refrigeration, what's going on and how we can use it. And today, who is talking? Mine, of course. My name is Kuvanç Santaj. I'm a mechanical engineer, and I am the one of the trainer for the combustible gases and refrigeration cycles. And uh, I am the board of director one of the board of director of refrigeration industry and business people association in Turkey and a project coordinator born in 1976 in Izmir and for refrigeration more than 21 years and as a general in the business uh, uh, as an engineer for 24 years and I'm married and has two children Today, what we speak about, first, of course, history, some legal obligations, main features, safety, one of the very important point for us, 
and operation and working area evacuations and some part of the or important part of the uh, system as pressure relief valves and we will see what about the performances and also what we have to do uh, in the maintenance or during the some uh, changing of the components or replacing of the components. As a historical, I'm sure uh, most of us is knowing the CO2 is the one of the first refrigerant used in refrigeration system in 1850s. And then after that, uh, after the CFC and HCFC developing, of course, CO2 is a little forgotten. And start from the millennium in 2000. Again, it start to use in retailer system. And today, we saw in the system as a cascade with uh, ammonia plus CO2 as a super low charge system in very, very big also warehouse or very big cold rooms. Safety aspect, of course, CO2 is already in the normal concentration of the CO2's atmospheric area is 370 ppm. And let, let's say the 1 million, in the 1 million particulars, 370. And if this, uh, this concentration increases the 2%, two, two then it starts to be harmful or the uh, healthy out of life. And then uh, most of us actually in the crowded area, we can feel maybe more than 2%. And then we need to be the, let's say the uh, fresh air. That's why. And at the last part of this, after that the 5% is very, very, uh, it can be for us um, dangerous. That's why for the big CO2 system, we will take some safety and we will see in the other part of uh, our slides. So after that, the 18% is, is the most dangerous part and anyone cannot stay. Uh, so when we see the properties of the CO2 system is very different from the others. For instance, for 404A is critical point temperature is 78 degree, but for CO2, very different from the other refrigerants is maximum 31 degree and the pressure is 74 bar and so we have very limited area to work with co2 this is one of the important point the other refrigerants and what's going on if we can use this chart for instance co2 below the five bar is becoming the dry ice so we don't want to be create a dry ice in our system because we need to gases to work to our refrigeration system gas or liquid or mixture but not dry so liquid area and the vapor area is okay but also we have a super critical area we don't want to go this area because we cannot control our system that's why we have to use some different equipment according to standard refrigeration system. Also, we will talk about this, the other parts. So what is the, our biggest difference from the normal refrigerant or normal refrigeration system? We can use only this limited parts. Main feature, saturation temperature in atmospheric pressure is 
minus 78 degree and critical temperature is 21 degree. We already uh, talked about this. And the typical applications, we can use it retail, refuge, retail refrigeration, heat pumps, and integral modules, also for the big capacity of the industrial refrigeration, it can be used. So not suitable for the retrofit system, designed for the conventional or non-flammable HFC or HCFC refrigerants. So we should change something and volumetric cooling capacity more than five times bigger than HFCs. Oops, then why we want to use CO2 in our system? One of the reasons. Of course, required compressor displacement less than the regular ones and pipe size and smaller heat exchangers. But on the other hand, high operation pressure CO2 system has. So its effect on the system design operates and especially we need to be, we need to be careful in the high ambient temperatures because it can be increasing the pressure. And please remember, we don't want to go super critical phase just for the reason of the high ambient temperature and high discharge temperature we have in CO2 system. And for the low temperature system has the two stage compression. For operating pressure, maximum operating pressure is typically 90 bars. And the condensing pressure is for cascade system, typically 35 bar. So five times or more than four times higher than the regular refrigeration system, the standard or conventional refrigeration system. So just on the higher operation pressure have an effect on the rating of the components used, pipe thickness, mechanical joints should be evaded wherever possible. Control equipment setting is different from the conventional one. And two, the special tool used to access the system and refrigerant recovery equipment is those equipments different from the conventional systems. So also we need, we need to be, uh, say something about uh, uh, some part of the system. For instance, pressure relief bath high side in transcritical system can be set for the 120 bars and operating above the critical point of the transcritical system should be 90 bars and intermediate pressure in transcritical system between 35 and 65 bars. That's why in this side, in the cascade system, the low stage, we also need to be 40 bars pressure relief valve. And for, uh, again, for the low temperature evaporator, typical pressure is 15 bars and high temperature evaporator typical is 30, uh, 30 bars. So after the expansion valve, as you see for low temperature and high temperature evaporator side, approximately five times higher than the conventional system. They have the five times higher uh, pressure. And our cylinder standing outside in ambient, ambient temperature in the five degree, only five degree in the outside, the typical pressure is 40 bar. So we need to be careful as all the other, uh, the high pressure gases. And if we compare CO2 system operating pressure with the others, for instance, this is for 32, R32, 
this is 404A and CO2. Is a salmon bar in the same conditions, same outside temperature, and 404A approximately 10 bar, and R32 approximately 15 bars, but CO2 is 70 bars. When we come to the system types, it's also a kind of the historical develop, develop the system. The first system, the pump, sec uh, pump secondary system, is only used for the low temperature. And we need to be one pump is a liquid circuit. And for the high stage side, we have the the second the, uh, system without CO2 and CO2 is only using as a liquid phase. This is for the first system. And then what is the difference from the others? This system typically used for the chiller and for, for the uh, first side, it can be HFC, HC or ammonia, doesn't matter for the first cycle but at the end of the day for the low temperature and for the liquid circuit we need to be a co2 liquid receiver what is the advantage being volatile it partially evaporates in the heat exchanger so and uh, we can reduce the delta t across the heat exchanger we we can um, design the system where a smaller heat exchanger according to conventional one. And of course, the higher density of the CO2 means is the we need the less pump power. So system being to be more and more efficient. The second system is the standard cascade system is very common used in CO2 applications for the startup time, especially for the retailer in the beginning of the 2000s. So one side is the high stage system and the other is CO2, but this system different from the others because we have direct expansion in the system. And also for the first part of the cycle, again, especially are 134 or 14A, 404A, very common used, those type of system. And generally, CO2 working below than 40 bars. So it's for the startup time. Uh, this system used very common. It's very typically for the R410A, according to pressure, but of course, a little higher than this. And also uh, CO2 condensers in cascade heat exchanger, rejecting heat to evaporating high strength refrigerant. So it's also used for a while. And then for the, especially for the cone climate, some system start to be being Transcritical one is a standard system, as you see, standard equipment, compressor, condenser, liquid tank, expansion valve, and evaporator. But also we need uh, two special equipment for the system. One of them is regulation valve after the condenser to regulate the pressure between the condenser and the uh, liquid tank. The other is we have another regulation valve in the system. We need to eat, especially when the system stops, when the refrigeration doesn't need the system. If the ambient temperature is higher, then CO2 pressure can be increased suddenly. Avoid of this, just to be balanced to this line, we need this equipment. So in this system, condenser is calling it gas cooler because 
we cannot provide total liquid as the other conventional system condenser. That's why for the CO2 applications, we call it the gas cooler. And of course, pipe diameters is smaller than the others because we have very, very big volumetric barium according to conventional refrigerants. And typically for the transcritical system, as I told you, using in the cold climate, not for the warm or the, let's say the higher or uh, tropical climate, not suitable for the CO2 systems. And then the booster start to use. I think it should be 2007 like this and is a standard booster system. Again, direct expansion, but for the booster system, okay, we use the common gas cooler. We use the same regulation valves, but we need to be use a frequency converter because CO2 conditions can be easily changed. That's why to be provide more uh, effective control, we should use the frequency converter. What is the uh, a kind of obligation for the system? And with the parallel compressor, it start to be played, and then especially for the winter time, to provide uh, better efficiency then we start to use a parallel compressor to balance also capacity and provide the good efficiency of the system. And also this system is allowed to the heat recovery, what is very important, especially for the winter time in the cold climates. And really the system efficiency is increasing maybe more than five times according to uh, system capacity or the other activities. And then ejector is came to the CO2 system. And what is ejector? Ejector is a kind of collector I can uh, tell. And also is the balancing of the air pressure and it's allowed to more than 40 degree ambient temperature working the system is more efficient than the conventional system. That's why it's very, very important equipment. How it works? There is just uh, some nozzles is working and according to system capacity, these nozzles working. As a general, as shown in the chain, for instance, the, these two, two lines is being as a uh, maintenance, but for the four nozzles is working according to capacity and it's very reactive solenoid was the system and very fastly react. Okay, just, I want to recap on the generations. It start for the, let's say new generation with booster and then parallel compressor is joined and then ejector is joined. So the system increase, increase according to create more efficient system, according to create more available for the all climates for CO2 system. If we can see the performances according to 404A in the regular system as a regular Carnot cycle, we can see required displacement is very less because of the volumetric volume, but CO2 is the less than the other for the standard system. But what we talk about the booster, booster with parallel compressor, booster with parallel compressor plus ejector. Let's see the some different cities all around the world, the performance comparison, CO2 booster, parallel compression, and parallel ejector system. Uh, this comparison, CO2 with 404A, some different states, and 404A except 100%. See the results. 
So today, if we can consider to, let's say, availability of the components and uh, very, uh, let's say, more demand from the market. And also, of course, the, the more experience for the technicians. And we need to be less carbon footprint. We don't want to increase the energy consumption. We can say with this uh, scenario, CO2 is being more and more popular in refrigeration system all around the world. Why it's efficient? Low pressure drop because the system working in the very high pressure conditions according to others and good heat transfer due to the, we need to be, of course, the less heat transfer area and higher heat recovery potential. So we don't want to also through all the heating to the atmosphere instead of this, if we can use in some process, of course, we should prefer to take the heat and use the other process of us. One of the important issue is for the components pressure relief valve. Why? We need some different uh, limitation of or different part of the pressure relief valve in some different space on the system because the pressure can increase very rapidly. And of course, the safety is one of the most uh, important engine for us. First, safety, that's why. And then, uh, unfortunately, the leakage of force in the pressure relief valve uh, doesn't then reset correctly after a single event. That's why we are telling all our training, please don't try to reset your equipment, change it, changing. And then it is the, uh, let's say the most safety application. And of course, we need to be for the bigger system, the ventilation process. It can be two stage of the pressure relief valve. First, the one stage can be open and the second, and the one can be tried to be bypass from the gas to again enter the system for the suction line from the uh, discharge line to the suction line. And then the second stage, we have to vent it to the atmosphere. There's some example. Of course, we need to be specific equipment. Specific uh, equipment meaning is the test pressure should be 120 bar. For instance, those connections of the cylinders, hoses, and connection uh, components of the system. For the, there is also some special components we have for the replacement during the maintenance. For instance, this is a magnet. If we want to change this heat exchanger, firstly, we have to, of course, close to the valves and we have to vacuum, but we have no idea about if the heat exchanger has some also CO2 liquid or not in the uh, high pressure. That's why with this, Magnets also we can open to the solenoid and we can uh, balance to the pressure in everywhere. Then we should continue to our maintenance procedure. So another things, of course, very important during the, this process, we don't want to create also dry ice. We will see also. And which standards we can use it PN 378 and PAD, of course, pressure equipment directive is one of the important directive for us. 
and uh, also there is some ISO safety and design classifications. We have to be careful about it. As Marino told, uh, what kind of the classification about the safety group for some refrigerants is an A1, not flammable, flower toxic, but also it can be very harmful for our healthy. And typically, the first alarm level should be start of the 5% uh, of the PPM. And of course, high pressure. We have to be careful about the, during the maintenance or replacement process. And for the safety equipment, again, we need to be a well ventilated area or outside because normally in outside atmosphere, it can be directly goes and there is no uh, global warming potential or ozone displacement potential. A very high nose level is only, I know the very uh, one uh, dangerous uh, si situation is being for the CO2 system is the main reason is the very high nose because after the leakage cause of the very high nose level the people create a panic and then someone let's say hit the others it is very important point of course we need to use the uh, safety equipments as gloves or glasses like this and dry ice formation we have to be careful because by this case the system can uh, cannot work we stop but please consider if we want to be food safety or we want to prevent our foods in the cold rooms we cannot uh, stop the system that's why we have to be careful about this and of course the other equipment according to related regulations it should be uh, suitable for the r r744 system and working area again of course the especially for the personal personal detector can be used it especially for the big machinery uh, rooms it can be important so and uh, typical alarm levels for the personal one pre alarm at one percent is the 10,000 ppm and main alarm start to be two percent in uh, 2000 ppm evacuations we must be evacuated if the system open to air after pressure testing because CO2 and moisture create a carbonic acid. We don't want to do this because the, in our system, it's create a very, um, very dangerous uh, corrosion. And the system cannot stay during the lifetime. So we have to be careful about this. For the charge, firstly, we have to check the, uh, sorry, fix the, our cylinder. And only we have to use the uh, right hoses and it should be uh, stay more than 120 bars. We have to be sure the area is well ventilated. We have to uh, we we have to be sure the system working with CO two, and of course we have to use the suitable trolley. Unfortunately, every year, not for CO two in refrigeration business technicians, due to lack of the experience, and due to they they don't care about uh, this uh, safety standards. Unfortunately, they can. Uh, create some bad effects on their healthy or body. So 
that's why every time in every training we we make uh, maybe a couple of times repeat this conditions we already talked about this and maximum charge size again we can see for the en378 norms of course is depend on the location of the equipment and the area of the uh, ambient temperature system times it can be changeable according to system design event. if refrigerant leaks of course the leak potential is very high high operation pressures uh, vented during service and small molecule size and pressure relief valves and multiple joints for the bigger system leak potential is very high and uh, of course hazard is high pressure during the operation and stand still so we have to be good or detection equipment available for the refrigerant leaks we can use some spray or we can use of course the gas detector for the suitable electronic ones only dedicated for the co2 and also there is some ultrasonic uh, devices can be found and refrigerant links also if the machinery rooms as the charger than 25 kilograms for instance from the en378 knobs we have to be a ventilation system also we have to put uh, gas detection uh, a gas detector in the machinery rooms also in the en knobs we can find uh, all numbers co2 is heavier than the air air that's why the gas detector put in the bottom side of the machine rooms from the bottom 30 centimeters like this there is also some rules we can find it and if the alarm start for the 0.5 percent let's say the 5 uh, 5000 ppm that meaning is the concentration is increasing and we have to start for the ventilation For the, uh, it's also when we come to the even, I think so, the information should be refrigerant prices just in Turkey, according to cost of the refrigerant, what we see. And even for the, this one is the 1% CO2 and the other refrigerant prices as you see is higher than so that meaning is for the it's more and more feasible with the new system to install up the co2 applications so for the investment side energy consumption side and operation side if we use the right conditions according to standard we can provide very beneficial and the long life system with CO2. And market availability. Now, of course, refrigerant can be used better. And of course, we can find some training. Knowledge is increasing. Components is more and more available. And right now, is the all components can be found easily in anywhere, in normal conditions, not for COVID and of course tool and equipment is available thank you this is what my slide today thank you very much Kivanch. it was a very interesting presentation and also complete even if the time available was not so much uh, we have some questions and i would like to start if you agree with the most generic one from hanan how to choose the best co2 system very generic Ah, okay. It mm -hmm. can be also, let's say, depend on the system design and um, 
for instance, it's a cold room or it's a retailer store, low temperature, high temperature, maybe quick freezer. So where is, what is the location? So we have to uh, be careful about these details. And according to this, we can choose. But for generally, at the last term, of course, the retailer for the multi ejector being more popular for the bigger capacity. For the smaller capacity, also liquid ejector is enter our life. So if they can ask some question or so, I can try to be more detailed after this training because it's not, let's say, only one solution. Of course, of course. Uh, then we have half a question, half a comment by Ian. Uh, did you say the high density of CO2 is decreasing pumping power or increasing pumping power? And what is the relative to this? Decreasing, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. It's up to also due to their um, volumetric efficiency. So the heat uh, recover or let's say throw up the, is very, very higher than the regular uh refrigerant or conventional system that's why we need to be let, let's say the smaller size pipe or smaller volume of the heat exchangers if okay. i can understand correctly yeah i, I think yeah. The, the answer was also clear yeah so the other questions that we have are either for flammables or generic for the debate so I think it would be the best time for me to leave the floor to our Secretary General to conduct the final debate and also ask Marino and the other speakers to come back live with their webcams for the final greetings. And I go back to translating. Thank you very much. Uh, meanwhile, let me read the question for Marino. Uh, Brian asks, could uh, hydrocarbons be used in domestic monoblock heat pumps? as opposed to R32? Uh, in domestic, yes, uh, there are the regulations that can be used uh, up to, if I remember well, 400 grams uh, of refrigerant. Yeah. But it depends from the uh, local uh, regulation in the different uh, countries. Uh. Hello, Hello everyone. So thank you so much, Kivanj and Marino for the nice training. We have uh, one generic question, which I think is very interesting because it speaks about um, uh, norms, about uh, product norm normatives, about uh, the norms uh, 60335-2-89 about uh, uh, commercial refrigeration. And of course, there is also the dash 40 for heat pumps. It says, as they are not harmonized yet, what kind of certificate real alternatives does? What kind of certificate we do, we give with our, uh, uh, with our uh, project? Who wants to answer to this one? What we give? Uh, what I real think that uh, the give? most... I think, uh, Marco, that the most uh, uh, proper answer can come from you or from, uh, from Miriam, huh? because the, the question is regarding which type of uh, certification provide uh, the alternatives. I think uh, independently, I think also from this type of regulation. Huh? Yes, the normatives. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Miriam. Um, yeah, the, the certification for real alternatives at the moment is a CPD. It's, it's voluntary. Uh, it, it, we call professional development. This is not a regulated at the moment. Uh, this qualification we offer is simply training and, um, you know, additional skills. So um, I know that Marco and your colleagues at ARIA, and I think all of us in different countries are trying to encourage our legislators um, when they review the FGAS regulation to make this training a mandatory, and then we will comply with other requirements. Um, the, the standard, the norm that, that we discussed, I think was about a, or somebody mentioned is a, a product standard. Um, but in terms of training, there is no legal obligation on the training other than your normal duties as an employer to make sure people operate safely. I think That's I can add only that it's good that we have a consistent 
training among the members and uh, we use the same manual, the same book, the train, training schemes and some countries already implemented the real alternatives in their national legislation like Spain, as we said, and also we saw Armenia starting and also more are probably starting as well. So it's also nice to have consistent training and certification uh, around the globe. Yes. One question which is more um, a bit uh, uh, critical at the moment is about uh, PFAS, the restrictions, what will affect refrigeration from 2025? Hector is asking this question. It's a bit uh, critical because it's something that uh, we know is uh, uh, now at uh, the top agenda above us. You know, we are not, uh, uh, we are not uh, politicians, we are not uh, policy makers, so it's, not, it's above us, the fast restriction. Am I right? I think so, yes. Uh, uh, and also fast restriction should, uh, should not be applied to essential use uh, of the some such things. As uh, I think that refrigeration is an essential use. So should not involve the, the refrigerants. Yes. Yeah. And I would like to keep to training and certification today and to content yeah, yeah, if sure. it's possible. Yeah. So um, we have also a survey, I recall. So please uh, fill the survey. I would like till, uh, to have uh, uh, somebody from the um, audience. If they want to raise their hands, I'm happy to give them floor. I know uh, I have uh, um, the president of the um, African Association, Madi Sakande, who wants to say how useful was in Africa real alternatives. Can maybe uh, my colleague um, Alberto give the floor to Madi Sakande from Burkina Faso, president of the, uh, all the 50 association of refrigeration, 54, I think, if I'm right. Madi, I think you are connected. Hello and good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for uh, this uh, special day of a real alternative. My best uh, regard to Marco, to Didier, uh, to Mr. Marino Bassi for a great training he shared here. Uh, as an uh, African, we are happy and delighted to know that this kind of uh, program is used in Europe. Unfortunately, we are in Africa experiencing an unlikely event, dramatic event, because while we are changing the technology here in Europe to use a flammable refrigerants, unfortunately, uh, in Africa, there is not a rules regarding the introduction of such uh, technology. And we are experiencing some fire events, some explosion. And last year, we, we experienced six explosions in Nigeria. Unfortunately, five people uh, uh, lost their life there. Not uh, more than two weeks ago, we experienced also in, uh, in Zimbabwe an explosion event, uh, dad and son. Unfortunately, we, we lost also the, the, the son. So I think uh, it's crucial and very important uh, for Africa, of course, to talk about training or also about regulation because. Uh, Mr. Bassi, while talking about all this uh, technology, talk about national regulation uh, on this technology and this flammable refrigerants. And this uh, is somewhere also to make a call to all the institutions uh, which are now listing or participating to this uh, uh, important webinar to know that, of course, Africa is uh, at the hand of the end users of the technology. We can make a, a good technology here where we have a, a local rules, but if we will bring this technology to some place where they don't even technician have the tools to work with or with refrigerant, with flammable refrigerant, we mm, honestly speaking, all technical, uh, all technician in Africa who are going in the field will be likely, unlikely, uh, a terrorist. Because if you use a flammable refrigerant, you don't use a scale 
yes. the, the quantity of refrigerant you have to put in the in system, of course, you will. Yes, it will be important. Will explosion. So also this in is Africa. very important. Uh, we, as African, we will have something to say on this matter sooner because we are green. We want to, to save the world together, but we have to remember also that all this new technology is sharing around the world. So we have to pay attention about this matter uh, while we make a new rule for our country, for our area. The world is now a small village that have to think global. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madi, for, thank you for your uh, evidence. You. We have been together in Burkina Faso, Togo, and you're going in a couple of weeks in Madagascar doing training following real alternative schemes, right? Yes, you're right, Marco. Of course, uh, unfortunately, all, all this training has made, it, has made for 15 or 20 people, and you know 20 or people cannot be all the technicians in the country. So we need to spread we more to work. Share. We need to make more training. Of yes, course, we have to not share our experience. Only from, uh, from UNIDO or from other institutional area. It will, must be also in the local level so that we need from uh, the partners of African country to raise the awareness about this matter. Because we talk about efficiency, we talk about climate change, but we never talk about fires. This is very, very important. We have to talk about this is a big issue because the question we are raising around right now is to die today or to die on two centuries. No, no, it's not like that. Yourself, a question. We cannot live for two centuries. So that means we are able to die now with fire explosion with these technologies. We have of course. To, uh, and we focus a lot on safety. Our project is about safety. I, I see a lot of projects, a lot of uh, uh, technology uh, manufacturer making uh, advertising, making, of course, a report to say about the efficiency, to save about energy safety, to save about uh, greenhouse gases saving, to talk about everything except uh, explosion. Explos no, no, they talk about uh, yeah. it. Safety we is have, important. They always take care. We always take care about safety. Marco. I know, Marco, but <laughs> talk about the technology. I know, I know. I talk okay, about technology. Buddy, this sorry, is the I, reality. I Thank you so much for your time. My, my pleasure, Mati, always. Any more? Um, you want to share your uh, comments, your feedbacks? Um, speakers, please. Um, oh, I, I can see uh, we have still 200 people online. I can still see a few hands over. Can I give you the floor? Hands over. Are you ready to speak? I give it to you. Share your just five more minutes because we are. Uh, on time perfectly, so I want to give five more minutes if possible. So I have two persons here that raise their hands. Do you want to say anything? Nebolo Parastus, do you want to say anything? You raised your hands for some reasons. And Noboyuki Takeya, do you say something? Nebolo. No, uh, yes, uh, uh, good day. Uh, uh, really, I. Where are you from, Nebolo? Uh, I'm from Namibia. Namibia. Yes. Please. So uh, we, 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 I really appreciate uh, uh, the, this webinar today. It's, it's really informative. And it really made me to, to really believe that uh, refrigeration and air conditioning, uh, you know, we become also a global village, really. And uh, uh, we have then to consider and also to agree uh, that uh, we are from different corner of, of, of the world with different uh, uh, temperatures. Uh, like Namibia can be hot and uh, it can also be cold. Uh, you know, we receive different equipment with features that are not necessary here. I, I, I don't know how do we do this. And uh, you know, if you are a qualified refrigeration technician, it's only when you can figure out that, no, this was made maybe to superheat or to subcool. So, but a, 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 a lay person or a person that just learned refrigeration uh, from the, the from us qualified people might not identify why that components. What I what I want to say is, uh, to be honest, we could be fast with technology. I just want to concur with the with uh, with um, Madi 
we could be fast with technology, but we must also take cognizance of that those equipments are end up with in the hands of people at the different uh, uh, you know corner of the world where the temperature differ and also the training must really be shared and the technology must really be shared so that we don't leave each other behind. We Otherwise, are here for that reason. We are here for that reason to share the knowledge yeah. and to give it to you this knowledge. And I'm, I'm also a president of my HVAC in Namibia. Namibia oh, nice. HVAC, I'm the president of the association. Um, but yes, uh, definitely, if you if you guys can really, you know, it's always easy uh, to maybe gather, but through our president, Masamadi, they just left now. The yes, of course. We are in yes, strict are contact with uh, Madi for Africa, of course. Yes. Uh, me as president of AREA and Madi as president of UFRIARC. Yes. Thank you, Nepal. Right. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Nepal. Uh, Takeya, right, did you raise your hand? Do you want Thank to say you. a few words, Takeya? Maybe you're from Japan or am I mistaken? Takeya, can you uh, hear us? This is uh, Takeya speaking. Thank you for. Uh, the webinar. I, 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 I'm not, I'm not uh, raising, raising the hand, but uh, uh, it's a very informative. Uh, and uh, I, I'm, very I'm good. Where, of, where are you uh, from, Takeya? Yeah, yeah. I'm from Japan, but okay. uh, I was formerly uh, transferred to the France. All right. Okay. 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 And, Thank uh, you, Takeya. Uh, Sorry, okay. I, I thought and you raised uh, your hands. Thank you, Takeya. I'm, I'm in charge of uh, HBFC business still. Uh, in charge of uh, HBFE uh, and our business in Europe. Okay, so, thank you so uh, much. So, yeah. if do you uh, is anybody need um, has anything else to say? Questions? I think uh, we can we can finish here. But few more things, of course. The pool. The poll, the survey, we close it now. I think you can see the results. So, are you currently using alternative refrigerants? Um, 63 says yes. 63% says yes. Uh, 170, uh, 136 people answered. Uh, were you aware of real alternatives? 56% says yes. Are you in favor of mandatory certification? 76 says yes. So this is always a very high percentage, always. Always when we do this kind of um, uh, survey, always is very high who wants to have mandatory certification similar to fluorinated gases. So 76% of people want mandatory certification. Do you think natural refrigerant will take over synthetic refrigerants in the near future? 32% says yes now, 49%, so half, of our audience says, I think, but not in the near future. 13 says, I have doubts. Seven says, not at all. So I have to be honest, you know, the audience, which more probably is more linked to alternative natural refrigerants, says that it is very likely that we are going to move everything on natural refrigerants. But we have to be uh, honest, you know, but the audience probably is more related to natural refrigerants, our audience today, of course, yeah. Do you think you will use the real alternative training provider? 50% says yes, which is very, you know, it's very positive. I'm very happy about uh, that. This was the aim of our project, of our project and uh, our webinar, of course, that you are coming to do training because we need training and also the revision of the gas regulation I'm sure we'll push on the training side. I think there is no doubt on that. 32% um, says yes, but not uh, in the near future. 15% says no, and 4% says no. Any comments about this, um, this survey? Do you have any comments, uh, my dear uh, uh, colleagues? You, okay, we are done. So, my last word is to thank you, all the 184 participants, all the 10 speakers we had today, all the translators, the interpreters, they did a great job. It was not easy to do six languages translated at the same times for all our technicians. So I think everyone did a great job. So 
Thank you so much, everyone. You did a great job. And thank you to my team, of course. Bye bye. Maybe you can bye you bye. want to turn on your uh, your Microsoft <laughs> and say bye bye. bye. And everyone maybe want to, to go. Maybe bye. someone Thank you, want to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank bye. you, Marco, for all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aero. Bye.